Hello, good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street, this Sunday morning live. I'm Debbie and I'm going to be with you for the next three hours. And we've got lots to show you. Um, the first hour we're going to be looking at lots and lots of tilde pre-cuts. So we'll be doing a little bit of a half square triangle demonstration for you as well. We've got your early bird I'll show you in just a second. In the next hour, we've got some um, embroidery themed things for you. And then in the final, we've got the, um, the air thread overlocker and the Elna 720 as well. So we've got a really varied three hours coming up and it would be lovely to have you company for all three if you can stay with us but because you're up nice and early at eight o'clock in the morning we'd like to bring you a special deal this is a reduced price item for one day only or until it sells out and um, the last few times I've been here it's sold out very very quickly so we have three of the 20 to sew books from search press 20 to sew books are very simple projects with very simple instructions so these are going to be fabulous books for a beginner sewer for somebody that's learning to sew or to gift to somebody who's interested in sewing um, but very simple projects very simply explained and of course as the name suggests there are 20 of those in each one um, so I love to sew um, this is crazy garlands and buntings um, so I'll have a quick click through I'll, I'll just let you know so three for two you are getting all three of these for the price of two but let's take a look at crazy garlands and buntings first of all so this is Alistair MacDonald from House of Alistair that you may have recognised before. And he's put together some really fun garlands for you. And things that you might not expect, like eyeballs. <laughs> so, tools that you need. The nice thing with things like this is that um, you don't need very many tools and you don't need very much fabric. Oh, there's different techniques with pom-pom making as well. That's quite a, a nice idea. Um, so we've got little buntings with buttons. We've got um, toadstools and sausage, egg and bacon with tea bags. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Oh, frou-frou, pink and fluffy. And the ballerinas one's nice, isn't it? That's a lovely idea for a little ballet dancer's room. And then we've got the, um, the rainbows and the sun. So you've got your weather there. We've got sheep, those are mushrooms. Oh, retro disco, look at those records. Do you remember the first record you ever bought? If you're of that kind of age where it was records that we bought. And I remember when I was a child, um, we had um, Teddy Bear's Picnic on a 12 inch, and they were really thick and really heavy then, if you remember. But as, as a... Um, a trendy hip youngster when I was about 12 or 13. It was the glitter band. And I couldn't afford the single all by myself, so we shared the cost with my best friend. So she'd play it for a week, and then I'd have it for a week, and then she'd have it for a week. Then what happened to that? What was the first record you ever bought? Come and let me know on Facebook. Um, that's Crazy Garlands and Bunting. This one is cakes and candies. I did, <laughs> I did think when I, because we, we obviously don't, we, we prep at home. Um, so I saw the title of this and I thought, well, we're doing cakes on a sewing channel. Because we're sewing cakes, that's why. So these are quite sweet. So this is Greta Fitchett. And again, little projects. You could use these as pin cushions, um, little decorations, ornaments. You've got a burger in there as well, look. They are actually quite realistic. But maybe you just want to... Um, have a practice with your embroidery skills. I love the ruffle around that. I think it's a very clever idea to make icing. So basic net techniques and tools and then on to, again, very simple projects, very simply explained. There's a whole collection of these books as well. I think there have been some more as, um, as early birds on the shows. So there won't be early birds now, but do have a look on the website if you do collect these Love to Sew books. You've got Christmas cakes. <laughs> Valentine's, candies, and again, lots of hand sewing in there as well. Oh, happy birthdays, look. Maybe, maybe you can't send cakes in the post at the moment if they're going very far, worried about them getting squished. You won't, it won't go to your hips, will they, these? So I've got pink cushions and meringue and fonts and fancies and butterfly cakes and templates are in the back there as well. So that's cakes and candies. And then we've got Christmas stockings. I know, I'm said the C word twice now. Um, this is Rachel Rowe. 
but it is the techniques. And you, know, you start sewing now while we're, we're stuck at home. Um, look at all the different styles. You can have everybody stockinged up way in time for Christmas. And these make nice little um, gift bags as well. So not just to hang on the end of the bed or on your mantel shelf. Um, you can actually fill these full of whatever, sweets, cakes, cakes you've sewn maybe. Um, there could be advent calendars. But nice little decorations. And again, they're all quite small. We're all in miniature with these books. And techniques, again, that you can use somewhere else. Maybe you're making Christmas crackers. That would look lovely on a cracker. Um, you could put numbers on this one. There's a snowman. <laughs> the toy sack. That, I'd want a bigger one than that. That's a skinny ankle. An upcycle sweater. That's a lovely idea. Good to patchwork, rig wrap panels. And again, great for beginners. And you can use these ideas. I mean, you can make a big bow and you can put it on the front of a bag or a cushion cover. It's learning the techniques and then using them for other projects as well. I've got patterns in that one too. Oh, we have got patterns in the back of that one. So in effect, you're not paying for that one because it's buy this one, buy this one, get that one free. Or it could be that one free, it could be that one free. But you get three, one free. So £15.98 for all three of those, as long as we have the stock. So aren't you glad you got up nice and early this morning to take advantage of that saving? Uh, now, when you look at the side of your screen down here, if you're quite new to it, it says uh, 3 95 PMP all day. And that means that if you buy your early bird now um, and you pay your £3.95, if you come back later on in the day and order anything else, we won't charge you any extra postage, even if you want anything from a packet of pins to a sewing machine. Um, it's almost like having free postage for the rest of the day. So get that, that payment out of the way now uh, with your early bird, make your saving, and then come back to us and shop at your leisure. And that's even after uh, we're live, so after 11 o'clock, if you're shopping on the website or you're watching repeats or you're having a look on YouTube, anything that you order until midnight tonight, no extra postage is going to be charged. Right, that's early bird. If you'd like to send a message in, by the way, um, use Facebook. So if you go to the Sewing Street TV page, um, I'm there with you at the moment. I'm on the, the, the page, not the, not the fans page. I'm on the Facebook page. Um, so come and uh, send me a message there, as Kirsty has already. She says, morning, Debbie. My first record was Queen's Greatest Hits from Woolworths. Remember Woolworths? Remember Ranby's? Before it was Debenhams. Uh, back in the day when they had the top 100 albums out in store, that was when the music department was as you walked through the door and it was huge. I'd saved my Christmas and birthday money, so the only record I owned for a year. My parents were very bored of it by the time the next Christmas came around. Oh. I did have every one of T-Rex's singles and albums. Every one of them. And then I sold them all when I was about 18, so I was a bit broken. I wish I hadn't have done. Um, OK, we've got lots of Tilda fabrics. And I don't think you've seen these before. This is the Bon Voyage um, collection. What lovely colours. Now, these are fat eighths. I'll take one out and show you in just a second. Um, we do have fat quarters and we've got charm packs as well. Um, so I'll take you through those and what sizes they are and what it all means shortly. So this is £49.99. There's 20 pieces there in total and they all coordinate beautifully. This is what I love about pre-cuts and bundles that have been put together. Do you know I'm going to do it? Oh, this was so neat as well. I shall endeavour to put it all back neatly. So this is the size of a fat eighth. It's half of a fat quarter. So it's that. So if you're patchworking and piecing, you've got plenty enough fabric there to, well, you've got one, two, three, four, five. You could probably get six equivalents of charms out of that. Um, it's tilde fabric, so it is incredibly high quality. You can tell that by the handle, which is the way that the fabric feels and the drape. And the reason for that is because the threads that are used in high quality fabrics are very, very fine, but there are lots of them. So it's a really high denier fabric. So it has the drape, it has the smoothness, it has a lovely finish um, and it's not kind of see through and it's not scratchy. With this design particularly, you could easily fussy cut around those and use them individually, maybe as applique. Oh, we've got an applique bit coming up in the next hour as well. 
I shan't get into this then. Um, but let me take you through all of the others that come in this bundle. So all similar in colour. I would, and I will when I get to the charm pack, go for planes as well. Because I think all of these patterns next to each other are a little bit confusing. And if you put a plane next to it, it makes them really stand out. Or maybe not necessarily the plane, maybe just something like this. Planer, make this stand out. Because see what you, they, they kind of disappear together, don't they? Or into each other when you've, when you've got heavily patterned pieces. So we've got the largers, and again, that could be um, that could be easily fussy cut or English paper piece. You could fit a hexagon inside there, maybe. That's why I like very small prints for using on small projects. So florals like this, you could easily use if you're making half-inch hexagon paper pieces. I wouldn't have the patience myself. Um, that's got rabbit on it. There you go. <laughs> or is it a hair? Got a hair on that. Um, so more florals. You can tell it's Tilda, can't you? There's something very distinctive about Tilda, the Tilda lifestyle. Um, the, it's, it's, I think she's very clever, the way everything ties in together. So even with you know previous collections, you'll find that they, they just tend to they tend to blend. So if you collect Tildas or if you have, um, maybe it's Tilda dolls, or you have a collection of books. I've got quite a collection. I, can, I must have never followed a pattern, a Tilda pattern. But I love the lifestyle pictures that she puts in her books. Um, I love that feeling, the, um, you know, the white wood and bright furniture and cushion covers that pop. She just, she just makes some silly hats, though. Um, this is all the same pack, still going through all of those 20 pieces. All for £49.99. and pence. So that's, you don't see fat eighths very often, do you? So that's quite a nice collection. And again, if you're patchworking, that is a decent size, isn't it? You're getting so much. If you're the dressmaker, no idea what you do with them. Um, but certainly if you're patchworking, quilting or making smaller items, or maybe it's the Tilda dolls that you love, then that would be perfect for you. I'll have a go at that later. We have fat quarters too. Shan't take all of these out. Or maybe I should. Um, this is the, the red option. So, again, we've got the florals. Basically twice the size of the pieces you've just seen. So we've got five pieces. That's beautiful, isn't it? For £22.99. These are lovely. But really, they're, they're very, very detailed, but they're very distinctive as well. You know, you find that with a lot of designers, don't you? You'll say, if I took the label off and said, who do you think made that? I'd have to take the ribbon off as well. Um, I think you'd know that that was Tilda. So that's the red. And then there's the, I even like the label. It's very retro, isn't it? Um, so this is the blue. Lilac. I wouldn't say that was blue personally but you know but we're calling it blue and again five pieces in total oops if you want me to open these up just send me a message on facebook if you want to if you want to see anything in more depth or more detail then just let me know so that's blue and then we've got the small flower. These all go so well together as well, and they're all, all very different prints. So if you went for the whole bundle, you'd have 20 fat quarters, and every one of the prints is different. Um, this is the red small flowers. You see, I mean, that goes with the blues. It goes with the large red. It goes with the larger blues. It goes with the, the charm packs. It goes with... Oh, you, you get the idea. Oh, and that goes very well with the plane. Mm. Love to have a play. Yeah, I think she she probably uses all of the same tones throughout the collections, which is which is very clever because it means you're going to come back and buy more from her. Um, but it's very good for you as well because you just know that things are going to match so well. I'm glad we've only got four of these fat quarter sets because if there are any more, I just I'd be think I just don't know what to go for. I love all of them. And then you tend to go for nothing, don't you? No, no, too much choice. Can't bother. 
finally, the small flowers in blue. But there's so many colours to pick out on this as well. Um, I know I say it a lot, I was rabbiting on about it yesterday. Mixing different fabrics together, it's very rarely I would buy one piece of fabric. I'd have something else to go with it. Certainly with heavily patterned fabrics like these, I would have another one to go with it. But you can pick out the green, the cream, the reds, the lilac that we're calling blue. Um, reds and creams again as well. I like the cream background, I think it's really classy. That would even go with a darker teal colour. You could mix and match different weights of fabrics with it as well. And if you do want something dark, look at that. It's not exactly the same colour, but it really brings out the pale teal on these. Oh, I love playing with fabric. Look at this. I'm not showing you these yet. Look, they're on the website if you want to have a look. This is the canvas. So there's no reason why you couldn't mix a canvas with a cotton. I wouldn't necessarily quilt with it, but if you're home, oh, that's the one. That's the one. So how, how about giving credit to Joe, our director today, who said, wouldn't it look nice if you made an apron out of the, um, the canvas and then just had pockets out of your tilde? And that is a, that's a really nice way, actually, of stretching your more expensive, because this is so affordable. I was going to say cheap, but it's not cheap, it's affordable. Um, that's coming later on with the canvas, but it, it just means that what you're spending more money on goes even further when you're only using it for, um, for trimmings. So that's your blues. Again, at £22.99. I do like value for money. It's the one thing that my mother instilled in me. Make your own everything. Not making anything if I can... Not buying anything if I can make it for less, she used to say. Um, then we've got charm packs. And I can open these because I'm going to use them. So a charm pack is actually a five inch, five inch squares. Pinked around the edge. And here, you've got 40 in total. And, you know, this is an absolutely brand spanking new collection, not just to us here at Sewing Street. It is a brand new Tilda collection. So two of each of those. So you might not have seen these anywhere before. It's nice to have something new, isn't it? Something a little bit different. So two of each of 20 designs. So you've seen all these before in the fat quarters, in the fat eighths. And now for the first time, in your five inch square charm packs. So, it was actually inspired by ceramics and pottery, which Tony Finnegan collected from her travels around the world. That's interesting, isn't it? That's, um, I, I wouldn't have looked at this and thought pottery. But that's where it comes from. So she's hoping that uh, you can travel in your minds, apparently, and dream about the future. Mm. Oh, this is all from uh, the Tilda website. She says, we can dream about the future while we're waiting for the days when we can hug our family and friends again. Isn't that nice? Nice inspiration from her. So again, £22.99 for all of those. 40 in total. I just want to measure those as well because sometimes, depending on the manufacturer, um, the five inches can be just inside the pinked edge and it can be just on the edge of the pinked edge. So that's quite important when you're thinking about seam allowances. Um, so it is exactly on the edge of the pink, of the pinked area. So sometimes the manufacturers will take it just inside the edge, so then you have to allow a little extra for your seam allowance. That's not going to affect the seam allowance. You still go a quarter of an inch right from the edge there. That's just to stop it fraying. Um, so I just thought I'd check that. OK, so all of those are £22.99. pence. Shall we have a play? All right, so move you down there and you down there. One day when we have our new studio, we'll have big tables. Might use those. Okay, I thought, what are we going to do with five inch squares? 
if you are new to patchwork and quilting, this, this is a really nice size to get going with. Very basically, all you need to do is to sew them together. Really, really easy. So arrange those in a manner which pleases your eye and then simply sew them together. And that's, that is a very, very simple way of making what could be quite a large quilt because you've got 40 of those in total. Um, or certainly a cock quilt. But I'm thinking most of you will know how to sew squares together, so I thought we'd do some half and quarter square triangles with them. Um, and what I'm going to do is to piece some pieces together and then in the 10 o'clock show, when we've got the sewing machine on the show, um, I'll do some free motion quilting. We'll put some backing on the back of there and we, we may end up with a tote bag. Have a habit of not quite finishing. So I am going to use some plain as well, just to break this up a little bit and make my, my squares go a little bit further. So I'm going to have, I need a blue one in there because I'm going to use a plain blue and that will pull out the colours. So I'll maybe replace that with that one. And we will have, we'll have, let's start with those and see how we go. Um, charm pack's really busy, by the way, at the moment. So if you want to go for the charm pack, I would order now. You're not going to miss very much at the moment. I'm only cutting up. And um, if you do miss anything, then this show will be on YouTube probably later on today or tomorrow. It should, should be there then. So let's cut out. I'm just starting with those for now. And I'm just going to cut out some five inch squares from my blue fabric, which needs an iron. So well prepped. I'll cut it out first. I know it won't be as accurate. Um, so I'm just using a small ruler. I'm going to line that up here and snip around. One, two, three, four, five. I could do um, more than two at a time, actually, couldn't I? Thank you. I always think I'm well prepped. Um, prepped well. Pressing that would be useful. <laughs> I was told this morning that there was going to be no running around the studio after me today. You were. I told him he would. Thank you. <laughs> Mustn't grumble. We'll just iron that so we get an accurate cut. Not, not so important for this one, but we don't want to be working with, with creased up fabric, do we? Um, this is from a bundle that's coming up, by the way. So it's, it's the one that comes with all of those. There's a plane in there. So have a look on the website if it's this one takes you fancy. Come on, up we go. Quick press around there. I'll give it another press when the iron's heated up better later. But it's better than it was, that's fine. <laughs> okay. So it's a very busy morning when we get here, actually. We have tea and coffee to make and sanitizing to do right where was i so we'll cut four or to get let's chop that off and get it straight first of all i'm i'm, I'm fine with a little ruler for now I, w I would have brought a bigger ruler but i thought i was only going to cut squares right and then we need five inches So again, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit bigger on this one. So I've done that there. Oh, look. I, <laughs> I also said this morning, I'll use my own rotary cutter because yours isn't very good. It needs a new blade. And I think my rotary cutter needs a new blade. That's what's its law, isn't it? Oh, now a quarter of the stock of these are sold out. Right, so what I'm going to do is to put two of these together, right sides together, and line those up. Then we'll draw a line straight across the centre. Uh, 
from one diagonal to another. I should have had that longer ruler, shouldn't I? An eight by eight would have been a lot better for going diagonally across a five inch square. It's a good job everything's at hand and we don't keep things upstairs, isn't it? It'd be very fit if that was the case. Any more messages? Don't forget, you can, you can come through on, um, on Facebook. Oh, Nigel's made a sewing machine cover. That is lovely. Oh, well done. Love seeing what you've been making. Thank you. 12 by 12 is fine. Thank you very much. So, pin these together if you want. I'm just doing this to be quick. And we will have a diagonal line across here. And then I'm going to sew either side a quarter of an inch away. Um, now, it's up to you if you wanted to mark that. So you could go, you can measure with your ruler. This machine's got a quarter of an inch setting. So I know that when I line the edge of the foot up to that line and sew, and I'm going to use a small stitch. Um, I'm on 1.8, which is fine on this one. Small stitches make stronger seams. And I'm going to press the seam open, um, in which case a small stitch is going to work better. So along one side, then along the other side like so. So this machine, by the way, is going to be up at 10 o'clock this morning. And if you've got it already, I know a lot of you have, I'd love to hear from you. Right, then we're going to go straight down the centre of this one. I can see that's exactly a quarter of an inch as well, so that foot worked well. And then before I move it, I'm going across this way. Straight down the centre again, make sure that's nice and square. We do have rotating cutting mats, which should have been an idea, but I'm OK. <laughs> and then when I part these, I've got quarter square triangles. So I'm going to press those open. It's up to you if you want to press to one side or you want to press open. That's, that's your prerogative. Um, personal taste, but I find if I'm quilting over the top um, of a seam, I like the seam to be open because it's a little bit bulky when I press to one side. No steam, nice sharp press. Leave that to cool before I start doing anything with it because the seam won't be set until the fabric's cooled down. Oh, do you know what? We've got a tool for this which isn't coming up till the next hour, but this is a hera marker, but it's a new hera marker. It's different to the one we've had previously. So that's easier. And I can press that open. Easier than using your fingers. This isn't exactly what it's meant for, but it works. Is that a press? Oh, Sandra's messaged in. Hi, Sandra. Uh, she loves work working with charm patches. They're such a good buy. I'm with you on that one. She likes to use them for cathedral window, but I love cathedral windows. Um, they, they just look so difficult, don't they? So complicated, but they're, they're really effective. So are you a machiner or a hand sewer? I like to hand sew them. Um, right, finally here. Let's open you up. Satisfying, isn't it? I know you hear some people saying about, you know, the, the preparation and the cutting being the chore and all you want to do is sit and sew them together. I think if you're, if you're patchworking and quilting, this is all part of it. It's, you know, I, I really enjoy this bit. Oh, now then. The blue bundle of the Fat Quarters is in the lead at the moment. Let me just give you a reminder of the blue bundle with the large ones or the small flowers. The large ones, it's these ones, look. So these are they. 
and there are five in the bundle. I'd say it was more lilac-y than blue myself. There you go. And those are there. So again, you've got the coral in there, you've got the deeper reds, you've got a cream in the background. You've got the pale blues, the turquoises. Five of those for £22.99. pence. So those are in the lead. So that's one way of doing that. I'm going to do another one, but I'm not going to cut it into four straight away. So we'll do this one quickly because we know how to do it now. So again, down the centre. And so, a quarter of an inch either side. Put a pin in that to hold it if you like. And then, there we go. I love the speed of this machine. If you're doing a few of these, I'll be chain piecing as well to save on a little bit of thread. But just for speed's sake today, we'll do this. There we go, then we'll chop that in half. Like so. We'll quickly press those open. I'll just do that with my finger for now. Roll and press would be ideal for this as well. Oh, let's iron it. If you're going to do the job, do it proper, like. I find it easier as well to press to one side before I open up and press down the centre, but that's again, that's up to you. And again, if you want to press to one side, then press to one side. There's no, no rules, no one's going to know with your finished quilt patchwork which way it's been pressed. All right, quarter square triangles and half square triangles used to confuse me. I'll have a look at that in just a second. Because um, they both look the same. And I know one's a square cut in half and one's a square cut into quarters, but they're the same shape. So I'll have a chat about that in a second. Oh, flatten out you. These little irons are on the website as well. Right. Oh, have they sold out? We'll have to get those back in stock again then, won't they? Because those are very useful. OK, I'm not going to square those off at the moment. I'm going to put my blue square over the top here, which is too big, but that's fine. And this time... So across there. Now, this charm pack is the only charm pack that we've got all day today and over a third of the stock has now sold out so if you want it stop watching for a minute <laughs> so over to the sewing machine and just like before I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch down each side got my thread stuck there Like so. Oh, the small red fat quarter pack as well. That's that one. No, it's not. It's that one. We've got 28 of those left. So those are going really, really quickly as well. Remember, all of this Tilda fabric is brand new. It's a brand new range. Brand new to us, but brand new to Tilda. Brand new to anywhere else that's selling it, to be honest. Brand new. Right, I am going to trim this down a little bit. But again, I'll, I'll square it up later. And of course, you don't have to use a charm pack. You can make these squares any size you like. So you can have teeny tiny ones, you can be using eight inch squares. The choice is yours. Oh, Kathleen's message in. Hi, Kathleen. Uh, hi, Debbie Lovely Show. Thank you very much. Um, she loves charm packs for indoor bunting. That's a nice idea. Um, she's got them in her summer house. Oh, your summer house. How posh. But that's such a nice idea because you'd just have to hang them up, wouldn't you? If you've got a charm pack that's got the pink edge so it's not going to fray. That's a lovely idea and just have a whole row of little flags. Oh, OK. So we're ironing again.
So we have this. And I'm, I'm just going to press to one side because I want to get on with it. I'd normally press those open, but you know. So you've got two quarter square triangles and one half square triangle. And then I need to trim these down so they're all uniform in size. So let's um, square these up. You know, no matter how, I don't know if it's just me, but no matter how hard I try to be incredibly accurate, they never turn out to be absolutely perfect, but that's absolutely fine. These square rulers are really handy if you're truing something up like this because you can put that diagonal line straight across the seam in the centre and push it up to the edge. So my finish size here is going to be, let's make it four inches. So I'm cutting down quite a bit. It would be four and a half inches, but I've gone a bit skew if. But that's fine because all I want to make sure is that these are all the same size. So it doesn't matter if they're four and a quarter, if they're three and seven eighths, doesn't matter as long as they're all the same. So let's turn this around. And again, that would have been really handy to have um, the little turntable, but there you go. So four and a quarter. Yeah, I, I don't have anybody that can get me one, you see. Did I say four and a quarter, did I say four? Did I say four, let's cut it down to four then. But just making sure that the corners are on the corners because I want that seam to go straight into the corner there. And then let's do it again with this one. I think I'd, for, the, for the sake of my, um, my project, um, I think we'll just do a few of these. I'll stop here all day. But, you know, if you're making one at home, then you can be there all day. This is what I love. I love the, the, the figuring out and the cutting out. Oh, that side. And then using small pieces of fabric, so it doesn't really matter if, if we get it wrong. Because we can start all over again. Because like, half of my fabric isn't even in the charm pack. And then I've got this one we can add somewhere. So let's square this one up as well. So straight along that diagonal. There we go. So if, you, if you've got your five inch square, really, you should end up with a four and a half inch square, um, allowing a half an inch V seam allowance because there's a quarter of an inch either side of the diagonal. Um, I can never get it spot on. I find it a lot easier to go a little bit oversized and then cut them down a bit. You're maybe a lot more experienced than I am at doing things like this and you can get them perfect first time, but I, I don't. But you get the idea, that's how we go with that one. And then there are many different ways that you can put these together, have a play with them and come up with, um, with your own designs. This is going to be a bit of a mishmash of different things though. I'll carry on with that later on. Oh, I was going to say half square and quarter square triangles, wasn't I? Um, it's all about the grain. So if I, this is the grain of the fabric. If you knew, your grain goes that way and that way. So you've got your, your warp and your weft. Your warp is the one that goes this way and the weft is the one that goes across that way. So on a cotton, there is no give in that or very little give. This angle here is a 45 degree bias, so that's the diagonal that goes from one side to the other. That has stretch. So that's not me stretching out the fabric and not stretching it that way. That's the way, that's the nature of cotton. That's what happens, so it's stretchy that way. So if I cut this into a half, that's my half square triangle. And the stretch is on that section there. So ideally, what you want to do when you're making a block is to make sure all of your bias bits, your stretchy bits, are on the inside and the outside of your block is the woven bit. And that's going to help your blocks um, stop from puckering and gathering up and stretching as you're sewing. So we like to keep those kind of enclosed like that. But a quarter of a square triangle, if I just cut this over again, if I was cutting these to the same size as previous, so if I had a, a 10 inch square and cut it into fours, those triangles all look the same and they look just the same as the, um, 
the half square triangle. So if I was to give you a triangle, show you a triangle, that would look exactly the same as a half square triangle, but it's not, it's a quarter square triangle. And the reason being, when we're talking about bias, you've now got the bias on these two sides. So a half square triangle has bias on the long side, and that's it. A quarter square triangle has the bias on the two sides there. So again, if you're making any kind of designs using quarter square triangles, um, it's preferable to keep them on the inside of the block so the outside has the bit that doesn't stretch and then your quilt's going to sit neater. Okay, right, we'll come back to that in a bit. We might do a little bit more of that later. It's quite good fun, isn't it? Chopping fabric up and putting it back together again and just playing and, and seeing. I might just do a border of that one. I'll do two more at some point, maybe later. We're back later on the sewing machine anyway. That was a bit of a waste. Okay, so I've got three of those. We're always happy way. Um, do you want to have a look at the rulers I was using? These are creative grids. Creative grids have this um, invaluable um, way of not slipping. Um, they've got dots on the back of them. They're not sticky, um, but they're grippy. So they're, they're, they're rough. You can, you can hear that. Um, so that stops them sliding over your fabric, um, which is invaluable particularly when you're using a rotary cutter because you don't want things to be moving when you're doing that. So that gives it purchase. It gives it a good old grip. Um, this is the five and a half inch um, uh, square <laughs> ruler. Um, what do you, uh, six and a half inches, sorry. What you'll also notice is that you've got a QR code on here. So if you've got a QR scanner um, on your um, tablet or on your smartphone, just hover over the top of here and it'll take you to a YouTube video, which you can go to anyway. It's not a private video. Have a look on YouTube for Creative Grids and there'll be somebody there explaining all about the rulers, how to use them. And there's normally quite a few projects on there as well. For squaring up, you've got the... Um, one inch is in the white and the one and a half inches are in the black. So if you're measuring one and a half inches from the edge, you go by this line here and then you've got two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half. So you can square up to six and a half inches on this one ruler alone. If you want to go larger, we have the 12 inch ruler as well. So if you're making larger blocks, then this is perfect. You've got your 45 degree line straight down the centre, just like with the smaller one as well. Um, it's all in inches with half inch increments. So you've got half inch and quarter of an inch, and these are marked in black and in white. So they really stand out against no matter what colour fabric you're going to use them against. And again, you can see all of those dots and those are the grippy bits that helps to stop it from slipping. So you've got a centre point as well, which is really useful. Imagine if you're joining uh, four blocks together, obviously that'll be behind there. Um, you can square it up in all directions without having to move the roller, which is quite handy as well. And again, you've got your video that you can take a look at with ideas as to how you're going to use your roller too. Markings in the black and white so they stand out, grippy bits, and you've got your half inch, uh, your inch and a half measurements in the black down the side as well. So have a look at the website for more. We've got loads of creative grid rulers on the website. So have a look on Sewing Street TV. No, it's not. It's sewingstreet.com. Um, this one's 23 That's a good price. £23.99. Um, I haven't told you how you can order if you're new, have I? Our website is sewingstreet.com. Um, when you go there, we share the platform with... Um, a jewellery maker. So don't be worried that you see jewellery bits and bobs in there. If you go to sewingstreet.com it should take you straight through to a video um, of what's happening there live and underneath the video if you just scroll down there are all the products that we have in the show uh, all throughout the morning and then there are different categories that you can have a look at um, whether you want patterns or books or fabrics or pre-cuts or tools or anything like that. Or you can order on the phone lines which is a free UK phone line which is 0800 001 4433 details on your screen right now. Now, the fabrics that I was using to blend were these ones. I've got a few to show you. Keep using them. Uh, these are the apple butter pearls. So, that's that right. And again, Tilda, Tilda quality. So, the same kind of colours, so everything mixes and matches really, really well. So, we've got the blue pearls, plain blue. You've got the red pearls, plain reds. And the gold pearls, plain gold. And the turquoise, plain turquoise. And the green, and the plain greens. But these make really nice blenders, whether you're using the planes or if you're using the, um, the pearls. Because look how they go. I mean, that is blue 
next to lilac, but it goes, it just matches. Actually, the green would look very nice with that. That one. Because that's just the same colour green as the leaves on here, so it picks it up really well. Um, and we've got the pink background to the red one, which is that one. So again, they blend really well. I, I really would, if you're going for any of the charm packs, if you're going for any of the fat quarter bundles or the fat eights, I would go for the plainer ones as well. If you want exactly the same quality as your Tilda um, patterned fabric, then of course this is Tilda fabric as well. So you've got that same quality. But even having a pattern, the pearl pattern on here, it makes your pattern fabric go so much further and breaks it up so the patterns stand out on your printed fabric. So that's £31.99. And we've got 10 pieces in there in total. The red small, that's been your favourite out of the fat quarters so far. But it's reds and it's corals and it's pinks and it's blues and it's teals and it's turquoise and it's got the green in there as well. So again, go for the both. Unless you've got some at home already that you can stretch your pattern fabric out with, then certainly go for another pack, a play in a pack. So really pretty fabrics for £22.99. There are five pieces there in total. Makes that one look really good value, doesn't it? Mm. But if you change your mind later on, you think, oh, you know, I should have come, I should have had that fabric. As long as we have it, have a look on the website. We won't charge you any extra postage, remember, if you come back and order anything else throughout the course of the day till midnight tonight. Right, let's take a look at our core fabrics. I'm we doing this one. Right, mixed them up, didn't I? It's a good job, I have a Joe. Um, right, we have light blue, navy blue and teal. I love these, uh, these fabrics, their quality is so good. That is such a low price, £11.49. What do we like? One and a half metres in total. This isn't something that you're going to be doing patchwork with. Well, you can do, but I wouldn't. I'd be making bags, I'd be making um, summer trousers. You're going to need a bit more than that, though. Um, I'd be making... You could do a patchwork coat. Summer coat would be ideal. I'd be covering my outside chairs so that when the rain stops, we can sit outside in the sunshine again um, and have that really lovely nautical kind of feeling. This is the colours of the sea. Probably not the, the colours of the sea today. Probably the colours of the sea today a little bit more like that, <laughs> I would imagine. A little bit more grey today. Um, but that, that, it's the quality of these I really love. Um, and they're just the way that they go together so well as well. Um, so when you get it home, it's not a canvas like you'd expect to paint on. It's not thick and heavy. It's really wide as well. And it's just got a nice drape to it. The kind of, you know, like your linen trousers, a really good weight linen trousers. That's the kind of weight that you have with this. Um, so cushion covers, I think, would be perfect. All washable, ironable, all that kind of thing. Doesn't crease anything like linen, but it has that. It doesn't have a slub like linen does, but it's uh, it has that linen kind of feel to it. So all three pieces there. That is such good value for eleven pounds and forty nine pence. Let's have a look at the pinks, pinks and purples. This is the one that had the coral in it. Now two and, oh, they're my favorite colors. These two, look. I love those two colors together. Oh, I think they're so classy. Um, but this one has the pink and the fuchsia and your coral. All of those for 19 pounds 49. Two and a half meters of canvas, cotton canvas, 100% for 19 pounds and 49 pence. And if you are bag making or apron making or homewares making, these just go so well, that coral goes with practically all of the tilde, fat quarters, fat eights and charm packs that we've shown you so far. And in fact, they, well, they all go with everything. Look at that one, and even that one. Go on, £19.49, this is going to go such a long, long way. Perfect for satchels, these are. I've seen lots of satchels that you've been making out of them as well. Then we have the neutrals. So in this one, they look so stylish, don't they? All the greys together. We have 
We've got the cream. Now, this is a seeded cotton. So you can see the seeds, all these little flecks. Don't, don't try brushing them off. That's all part of the fabric. It's, um, those are the seed pods, cotton seed pods. Um, it's a very organic kind of look. That's why I like this one particularly. Um, it's the same kind of look as Calico, but so much better quality. Don't use this for twirls. You'd, you'd be wasting it. Um, then you have the white. We call that one a crew. And then the light grey charcoal and finally there is black so again all of those two and a half meters in total for 19 pounds and 49 pence we've also got we've got all my favorite fabrics here till we've got the canvas we've got the pu which is the most wonderfully soft faux leather so this is like this is really wide as well let me just show you quickly wider than you would expect there we go. So this is um, by the half meter, which means that you can buy bigger pieces and make clothes out of it. I've made skirts out of these before. They've got um, a little bit of stretch because they're laminated onto a knitted fabric. So of course, knitwear like jersey, it's going to stretch. Um, and if they overstretch, so if you, if, if you make a skirt, for instance, and it starts to seat a little bit, um, just give it a blast with a hot iron uh, for a hot steam from the back. This will melt if you touch it with an iron, but you can put a hot iron on the back of it and any creases will melt away and any kind of sagging and bagging will melt away as well. And you can cool wash it. So it's perfect for a tire. It makes wonderful bags. It's really easy to sew through. You don't need a special needle for it. A walking foot or a non-stick foot may help, but it's just really easy to sew with and it looks really classy because there's no shine to it. It's actually got um, like veins on it as if, it's, as if it was a leather. So that's the black. We have a dark brown. But again, it's not shiny. It has a sheen. It's got a sateen kind of finish. If it was shiny, it would look plasticky, and this doesn't. I think it looks really, really classy. Again, you've got your half meter there. You can see how soft, can't you? <gasps> it's like a chocolate advert for £6.99. Classic navy, and again, you can mix and match different fabrics together. If you're, um, if you're making a bag, I'm always making a bag of some sort, um, and you put maybe even something like the canvas in the natural, that goes really well with the navy, or with the ecru would look really good, and have that at the top, and then have your PU as the bag base to protect it, and then maybe matching handles out of the same, maybe a flap or a trim around a flap. This is soft enough to to make piping. I have made bags with piping covered in this fabric before. Couldn't do that with a lot of laminates, but you can with this one. So that's navy. I'm amazed we've got this one. This mustard sells out practically every time we bring it to you. Um, I'm not surprised. It's, it's a very, it's very on trend kind of, actually, there's that colour in there, look. See how it picks up on the dot? See, you can mix them with anything. Um, but colours that go together, I love the chocolate brown and the mustard and the black and the mustard looks really good as well. Very stylish. And you get a lot for your £6.99. There's a, there's a lot of fabric there. And then we have the red. Red can be a bit dodgy, I think, with laminated fabrics. Because if it's shiny, it really does look cheap. And this isn't, again, it's got that lovely sheen to it. I'll show you the back while you're there as well. Because it's laminated. You can see that on the selvage. That's supposed to be like that. But it's quite nice because you can see what's going on there. So chop all of this off like you would do on a fabric anyway. And then you've got the knitted fabric on the back. So it's got a little bit of stretch. It's not going to make bags bouncy. It's not that stretchy. But it does give it a comfortable feeling if you're going to make a jacket out of this maybe. Or one of those jackets where you make like the waistcoat section out of this and then uh, put fabric sleeves in it, that would be nice. I've got a similar one um, in black with, so all of this, I've got the waterfall down the front. Because this doesn't fray either, you don't need to hem it. Um, but then it's got like net sleeves, so that's very nice. That's why I bought it. So, do you know, you could mix these with your canvases, couldn't you? That's a bit too close. With the pale ones, that, that would work. Oh, now then we're down to single figures in the canvas. Oh, 
oh, I hope we can get some more of this back again. You're, you're so going to enjoy working with this canvas. You'll be so pleased when you get it home. Must be a bit worrying sometimes if you haven't ordered off the telly before and you say, well, what happens when I get it back and I don't like it? And I'm 100% convinced you will be over the moon with this one when you get it home. It's, it's a really beautiful fabric. In fact, everything that we have on the show is today. Um, you know, we've got the quality of the Tilders and the, the P. These are all fabrics that I would use myself. And I'm very picky. Right. Let me give you a reminder of what's left of the charm pack. Perks of the job, innit? There are two of each of 20 Tilder designs here. Five inches square. And this again is that brand new range that's only just come out. So hot off the press. The Tilda Bon Voyage. Have a look. Have a look on, um, on Tilda's website and see what she's saying about it as well, where the inspiration came from. Uh, when she was on her travel, she saw um, some amazing designs in pottery and ceramics. So that's where she took her inspiration from to give you these designs. But because we're not traveling around at the moment, she likes to think that you can use this as inspiration to make things, have a think about the future, when uh, the days when we can hug each other are going to be back again. Or you can just do a load of sewing while you're off work and you're at home and you've got the time to do it. And it's particularly when it's raining. Oh, I hope it goes sunny again. I do love the sunshine. Spent hours gardening yesterday. I was actually gardening as well. I got my gardening gloves out a couple of weeks ago. And then I got around to using them yesterday. Right, this is a pack of ten of... Um, Pack waters, apples and pearls, the apple butter collection. These are the pearl bits. So you get a pearl and a plain for each one. So those are the pearls and those are the solids. And ten of those in total. Um, so we've got the, the blue pearls and the blue solid and the red pearls and the red and the gold and the gold. And the turquoise, and the turquoise, and the green, and the green. Lovely fun colours. And, of course, you can use those on their own. I'm saying that, you know, I, I think they would make um, great kind of mixers and blenders to go with patterned fabric, but they're patterned anyway, so just use on the, those on your own if you like. Um, these are the blues from our cotton canvases. So three of those, one and a half metres for £11.49 pence. So I'm looking for things to match. They go with anything, they really do. Um, but again, such, such a lovely quality. The teal, I know, on its own has been really, really popular. Um, that seems to be one of the colours at the moment. Funny, isn't it, how, how we have trends of colours like that. Everybody seems to like the same colours. They gravitate towards teals and you gravitate towards um, mustard colours. Because we did have that in the, um, in the canvas at, at one point, but that's, that went. And blue apparently was the... The Pantone colour of the year. I wonder how many shades or which shade of blue it was. Must have been a particular shade. It was blue and blue is blue, isn't it? £11.49 for three of those. Now, anything you'd like to order, if you just joined us, have a look on our website, which is sewingstreet.com. Um, have a scroll down, you'll see everything that we have there, and you can place your order that way. Or you can go to the phone lines, which is 100 001 4433, and that is a UK helpline. And if you've got any questions there as well, also have a think about what you're going to tell me on Facebook. What have you been making? I've got any pictures to show me? Have you come up with an original idea? We'd love to see that as well. And that's on the Sewing Street TV Facebook page so off you pop and uh, put the kettle on and I'll see you again in about three minutes would you like to take part in our weekly competition if you do then all you have to do is head to the sewing street fan page group on Facebook post your picture of your make myself Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week we pick our favorite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show happy sewing and good luck
Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hello again and welcome back to Sewing Street this, this miserable Sunday morning. It was chucking it down with rain when I came in this morning. So I was on about the weather, not, not the sewing and, and not our lovely customers. Just, just the weather, the doom and the gloom. Imagine it's hot in here. Um, so this is the second of our live hours on Sewing Street if you've just joined us. Um, welcome along, it's lovely to have your company. My name's Debbie Shaw and in this hour we've got lots of tools, we've got some new things for you as well and we're going to be talking about the plique, sash co and embroidery. Um, any questions you have? I've had one from, um, from Christine. Um, I'll answer your question in the next hour if that's okay Christine because we're going to be featuring the 720 sewing machine so I can give you some ideas on to how to stop your nesting at the beginning of a seam. Um, so bear with us and if you need to go off and do something then have a look on YouTube later on and all the shows will be there. We are going to kick off though with a really big heavy coffee table type of book. Um, this is the Royal School of Needlework teaching you hand embroidery. Um, so hand embro I love all, at any genre of sewing, you know, just throw it at me, I love it. But hand embroidery is something that I find really relaxing. It's slow, um, it's calming, it's... it's we say um, mindful, don't we? But it's, it's mindless. You can lose yourself in embroidery and then create something that is so textless. It's like a photograph, isn't it? Um, and so beautiful. All of that is embroidery, which I think is, is pretty amazing. Uh, let's take a look at this book. It, it's, it's a heavy book. 
but different styles of embroidery as well. I, ju I, I just love this. Have a look. The kind of thing that um, maybe as a beginner or if you haven't done any embroidery for a while, you may be thinking, ah, oh, it's just too complicated, don't know where to start. I think just taking a look through the book, having a read, you're going to get inspired anyway. And then maybe use the techniques to create your own or you can follow the patterns that are in here. Let's have a quick flick further on. Um, because, no, I better not, because we're starting at the beginning and moving on, aren't we? So we've got the stitches, we've got the history, this is cruel work. Tools and materials, different design styles. So just lovely, lovely designs. Using very fine threads. Um, everything you need to know before you stitch. And then you've got, this is what I love. This is like um, painting with embroidery thread, using all the different colours of thread to just shade and blend and kind of vignette from, from one colour through to another. But you'll need to know all of these stitches and different... Look at this! All of the different stitches and styles to be able to create some wonderful designs. Do you know when I looked through this, I was looking at things like this. I went straight back to being eight years old um, doing cross stitch at school because some of the stitches are recognised from that. Or just doing, you know, little fancy stitches around garments and things like that. But there's so many different techniques and, and these stitches are so textural and dimensional and unusual. They're cl really clever. But you can imagine, you know, this, this may be... Um, oh, oh, yes! Oh! Um, it could be stitches around the flap of a bag or over a, a handle on a, on a strap that you're making. Um, you could use these as embellishments on... Oh, that's a nice one, a turkey rug stitch. And you see, the more to flick through, the more that you see. There's always something that you're going to miss. Um, around collars and cuffs and pockets and things like that. If you're making jackets, this would look wonderful. Oh, and on cushion covers and homewares. That I'd just put in a frame, I think. Wouldn't that be lovely in a child's bedroom? Oh, something funny. Um, <laughs> when my, my little granddaughter, who's, uh, she'll be three in August, um, she's quite smart, is Vienna. And she, we, were, we were chatting the other day and, uh, with, with Mum, um, and the conversation got round to something rather, well, that, that, that was a bit of a lie. And she says, not a lion, tiger. Lion and tigers. I thought they were so cute. So, so those are all your different stitches. Oh, that's the one on the cover, look. Isn't that amazing? But I think, oh, we've... <laughs> our wisteria, is so, it's so weedy this year. All the neighbours have these wonderful flowers adorning the fronts of their houses, and ours has just got a few drips of purple on it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, oh, look in the black and white shading. Beautiful. And there's some modern, you know, so you see some very, very traditional designs, but there's some very modern ones in here as well. I, I could sit and read this all day. I think you will. I think it's really going to be one of those coffee table type of books that when you've got a few minutes to sit and relax, you just have a fix through, maybe pick out something you like. Oh, and a denim jacket, look at that. Oh. So these are ideas for your own designs. So you're going to have... Um, a little bit of help there if you want to create something of your own. Sewing pearls in there, basket weaving. It's an amazing book. Diaper couching. So I'm quick read through. I don't see nappies anywhere. I wonder why that's called diaper couching. It'd probably tell you somewhere in here, wouldn't it? So, again, so many different styles, so many different stitches and so much inspiration. A bit of white work, look. So, now, I, I must admit, be, because this is a heavy book, you know, could affect the postage. A bit like when you order a sewing machine, could affect your postage. It won't. If you've already ordered your early bird, which is going to sell out, um, you won't be paying any postage for this one. 
So at $3.95 all day for your postage. So if you ordered this book now, it'll be $3.95. Anything else that you order throughout the day is going to be $3.95. If you wanted to order a 720 sewing machine, which is so heavy I can't lift it, and the box is this big, still no extra postage. $3.95 is for all day long. £25 for your book of embroidery. And remember, this is from the Royal School of Needlework. So they, they kind of know what they're talking about, don't they? Now, while we're talking embroidery, this is something that you don't see very often. Um, it's a table clamp. I mean, I've searched for them. I've tried. It's taken us a long time to get this here for you as well. Um, it goes on the edge of the table like so, and then it just simply screws at the bottom. So this could maybe be on um, an arm of a chair if it'll fit onto maybe a wooden arm of a chair, um, but just easy to use on your table. And it, it's, well, it holds it for you, doesn't it? And it's a really lovely quality as well. So there you go, look. So it's anglable. You can tighten that up to hold it tight. Uh, just slips on the side of a table. That's all adjustable as well. The height is adjustable, so we can go down, we can go up. That comes out completely, so you will have to put that together when you get it home. It's not difficult. And then that sits at to the height that you want it to. And then you can embroider. I'm kind of thinking at the side of you, you'd have that, wouldn't you? And then you can embroider on your knee. We can turn this around so it's facing you. It does at, at, at your convenience, if you like. But again, for £19.99, you've got a great price. And this is something that we've been trying to get hold of for a long, long time. So we've got it for you right now. So it all comes nicely packaged and boxed up with instructions as well. Um, but it doesn't really need a lot of instructions on how to use that. It's a clamped embroidery hoop at the end of the day, but it's a really nice quality one. 10 inches in size for £19.99. So it's nice to have your, your hands free though, isn't it? If you're particularly, if you're going through the back and up the front, you're not holding with one hand and only having one hand to sew with, which is quite useful. We have embroidery threads and an organiser box for you. Um, inside here, there are some um, thread holders as well. So the idea is that you can decant your thread onto the thread holders. And then if I just show you in the bottom, you've got all of these individual compartments so you can store individual colours in there. So those are the thread holders. So little H-shaped things. So wrap your thread around there and stop them from knotting. I don't know about you, but no matter how careful I try and pull the thread out of this, I always get knotted. I know there's a way, you know, taking the thread out without even pulling the papers off, but for me, it just doesn't work. And then, oh, you should see my embroidery thread cupboard. Yes, I have an embroidery thread cupboard. It's about this big with two doors on the front, and you open it up, and it's like this bird's nest of thread, and I pull a little bit out, and then I get really wasteful because I'll pull it out and I can't find the end. And then I just, oh, I'll just cut that off anyway. So there's little ends in there. It's, it's a right old mess. And then I think one day, I, I, one day I'll go through all of that and I'll put them onto spool holders and then one, that day never comes. So, this would be brilliant for me. My daughter does a lot of um, hand embroidery as well. Um, she's working on one at the moment, which is in 12 inch hoop with tiny, tiny little flowers and words in it. And I have to say that her embroidery drawer is in the same state as my cupboard. Um, the threads that you're going to get will be random colours. I don't, I don't really care. I think, I think they're a bonus. Um, I'd pay more than six ninety nine for the box, to be honest. But you will get a selection of threads as well included in your six pounds and ninety nine pence. So again, you've got a fabulous price. A way to keep you organised. You've got a um, hundred of the paper bobbins in there. And again, I mean, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you've got eighteen boxes that you can store things in as well. All for £6.99. That's a good price, isn't it? We love a bargain. Right. We're, um, I think we're double-checking on the website that we've got the price right. No, it's there. It's, it's been there now. It's out there. It has to be £6.99. Nothing we can do about it. Let's take a look at our little scissor case. These are really nice scissors. You know, a lot of the time when you see novelty things, they're not, they're not that good, it's just a novelty. These are actually really lovely little snips and they've got like a filigree um, carving on them or design on them. Um, so they've got a vintage 
kind of look. But they're, they're not novelty, they're lovely little snippy scissors shop to the point, just like I like with a pair of scissors. Um, and they're really handy to have as well. I like the fact that you've got the scissor keeper in there, not just because it gives you somewhere to keep them, it helps to keep them protected. So that point isn't going to drop on your hand or your foot and um, it's going to protect the point of the scissors as well. So if that does get dropped or you've got it rattling around in your sewing box or the bottom of your handbag, it's not going to damage the scissors, which means that they're going to last longer. Now, £3.99, we do like to have a shop around and compare prices. We couldn't find anything as low as this in price. Um, and it's another one of those cases where if you're just going to order these, you're going to pay £3.95 postage. Normally, I'd say, don't bother, don't order those on their own. But, you know, I'd order those on their own with £3.95 postage because I still think that's a really good deal even with your postage. But if you bought your early bird or anything else already, then remember you don't pay any extra postage. I love that deal. I don't know any other shopping channel that does anything like that. It's like pay one PMP, PMP free for the rest of the day. So if you are, if you don't want to pay 3 95 postage for that and you've paid 3 95 postage already, free postage on those, isn't it? Nice little gift idea, those as well. Um, right, we have more fabulous scissors. These are the Fiskars scissors, or shears, I should say, with the white handles. Um, these are a really nice shear to use. And having the angled handles as shears do, and the nice long blade, so these are 24 centimetres, which I think is nine inches, um, you get a really lovely long cut. So if you're cutting larger pieces, if you're trimming back your blocks, or if you're dressmaking or curtain making, you get a more accurate cut when you cut for the whole of the length of the fabric. Let me find a piece of fabric to cut. It's a little bit creased, but I'm in, I was in the process of ironing that at the top of the show. Um, so a lot of the time with scissors, if they're not sharp, you'll be doing this. What a waste of time having big scissors if you're only using that much of the blade. I like a nice big long cut and then you don't get so much of those little snippy bits or the chopping bits that you get when you're trying to cut like this. And I like a sharp to the point. I know I'm terribly tedious talking about it every time I bring you scissors, but I do a lot of snipping into curves, into corners. You know what I did? Snipped into my finger, look. Oh, I know, that was so painful. But I was at this exact angle. <laughs> That's the downside of a sharp pair of scissors. And I did that straight through my finger. Oh, it didn't half throb. But again, tiny, tiny little snips or big long snips, and they're comfortable handles as well. Right-handed scissors for £14.99. That Have a look. Have a look around for 24 centimetre dressmaking shears and see what you come up with. Now, when you're not using your scissors, it's important to look after your scissors. They're a very important tool in your sewing arsenal. So it's important to keep them stored well. So we've got a scissor block, a wooden block to store your scissors in. That's a big pair of scissors and it's not knocking it over. It's a really nice quality and you can store um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve pairs of scissors in there. So let's have a, I'd balance them to be honest if you're putting bigger ones in there. But it's nice to be able to identify where your scissors are, keep them nicely organised. Keep those points away from kids and know where everything is. It keep, I, I like to be organised, um, particularly with sharp things like scissors. It tends to be scissors that I lose more than anything. I don't know why, I don't know what happens to them. I think we have a scissor fairy in the sewing room, but I put them down and then they're gone. Yes, and be before you know it, you've got your husband trolling off down the garden to cut the roof tiles on the shed with them. I, I'm, I'll never get over it. Honestly, he um, was sitting in the garden with my daughter and he'd got my best scissors and he just thought, oh, you're right, to drink a little bit. Okay. So what, what have you got there? Nothing. So what are you doing? Cutting roof tiles. Felt roof tiles on the shed, on my new shed. Yep, just, just cutting tight. Couldn't find the Stanley knife. I went all hot. My heart beating like this with scissors. Um, I do have quite a few, 
Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm a hoarder, but I've got quite a few pairs of scissors. But really, you need one good pair. One good pair of dressmaking shears, one good pair of scissors, one good pair of snips and a good pair of paper scissors. And a Stanley knife if your husband is putting a felt roof on the shed. I would recommend. So, lovely scissors, great storage for you as well. That's 14, oh, 24 pounds, 40 pounds 99 for your scissors and a great place to store them in your wooden block like so. That's only £10.99. Have a look on the website for more details. Right, let's take a look at some more fabrics. She can't say without it. This is a um, Henry Glass design. And you're getting the whole bundle, including the panel. The first time we brought you this, um, the panel sold out, it, oh, just like that. I used it to make um, a wall hanging, which could have been a small quilt, uh, by adding an extra border. Now this is for uh, no, this is for the panel on its own at six pounds ninety nine. I'd go for some of the other fabrics or maybe a plain blue as well, so that you can make it bigger and put a nice big border all the way around the edge. And then we have the uh, I, I kind of stitched around the edge, put some wadding on the back of it, stitched around the edge, and it looked look like I patched worked it together, like I pieced it together. So that's what you're getting. Look, it's really big. It could be a wall hanging, just as it is at the moment. You can chop into it. You don't have to use it all. And you could add to it if you wanted to make that into a little quilt. A big quilt. This is the blocks. Half a metre, 112 wide. And this one, I, you, you could applique with this, and I may well later on applique with it. Um, so you've got your hydrangeas and the little birds there as well. Really pretty. £6.99. And again, you've got half a metre. We don't have very much stock of any of these left now. And I've got a feeling we won't be seeing it again. We've reordered this quite a few times now. So half a metre, 100% cotton. Henry Glass, American company, family business, pride themselves on working with some of the world's best designers. And that was actually one of my picks. Now this one's called Tossed, and I, I think that's a shame they've done that. Because tossing a design is basically spinning all the flowers around so it's non-directional. I would rather have just called it hydrangeas on white. But there you go, it's tossed hydrangeas on white um, for your £6.99. But it is non-directional, uh, which means that you can use this any which way and you're not going to spoil the design at all. It's even got little swirls in the background, so there's lots of details on this one. But I love these colours. I just think they're so fresh and vibrant and happy and summery and uplifting. Right, show you now we've got bird houses. So this is blue bird houses. I think it's because they're blue birds. Because they're not all blue houses, but they're all blue birds. Um, and again, loads of details. Look at the wood on the, um, on the bird houses. It looks really distressed and, and vintage, doesn't it? Lovely little blue birds. And again, detailing in the background. Look at all of those swirls. So you could cut into it, you could quite easily fussy cut this one if you're making smaller projects. But I think home wears with this as well. I wouldn't necessarily um, you know, always make a quilt out of something. I think home wears, uh, you know, cushion covers and table, and particularly in the garden, if you're lucky enough to have a garden, you can sit outside in the lovely weather. You could be making, um, you know, covers for your outdoor tables and chairs and picnic related things baskets and bowls. Now this one would make a lovely border but it's actually printed that way onto the fabric so you'd need to order quite a few meters if you wanted to make a border out of that um, but that's what I'd do with it. I think I'd cut it all up into strips and again £6.99 for half a meter. If you did want more than one I would be quick because we don't have very many of these left now um, but they will come in one piece so if you wanted a two meter length order four and they'll all come cut together. Right. I want to take you back to our embroidery book before we move on. Because we have had a message from Sharon. Hi, Sharon. And she says... Oh, 
my daughter's friend studied at the Royal School of Needlework. And while there, she worked on the lace on Kate Middleton's wedding dress. Wow. Oh, she says, well, it would be amazing to just sit and flick through the book with a coffee. I think that would be a lovely way to while away the time. Oh, I wonder what that was like. Oh, have you got pictures? You put something on Facebook so we can have a look. I did, I did love that dress. It was a very nice dress, wasn't it? So I wonder if it was something like this. Oh, and how long did it take? How long was that dress, uh, would a dress like that take to make? I've been, I bet, I mean, when did they get engaged? Because they tend to get engaged and get married really quickly, don't they? So I, I would imagine there's a short time to make a dress, in which case there's probably hundreds of people working on it. But, you know, oh, look, that's lovely, Dresden work. There's something new to see every time you look at this. There's so much. Oh, look at this. Is that a mermaid? I'm going backwards through the book again, aren't I? I do apologise. tend to do that, don't you? Pick a magazine up and go backwards through it. I don't, I don't know why. But look at the... I thought, I thought it was a mermaid as I was going backwards. But this is... Oh, I'm going to have to show Kimberly this one. She'll love that. Oh, I can see her doing stuff like this. Things are a little bit different. No, oh, that's what it was. <laughs> I'll go forward through the book, shall I? That would be a little bit more easy to understand. So you're going to start off learning all of the different stitches and the history of the stitches and the different types of embroidery. Um, there's black work, gold work, red work, white work, um, lots of different styles and designs in here as well. There's his stitch finder. I like the, the black work, actually. It looks, it looks very modern for something that's quite traditional. I love that one. I thought it was a black and white photograph originally, but it's not. It's all embroidered in, in black and white. Shading in black work. Hmm. Right, so I can flick through this for the rest of the hour, or you can just buy it and flick through it any time you like at home. It's £25. And again, that's from the Royal School of Needlework. Um, right, oh, now then, we've got something else new for you in the form of applique scissors or duck build scissors, however you'd like to call them. And I'm going to, I'm going to chop into some fabric to show you how they work. So, I am going to have such a big bill at the end of the month for all of this fabric. I just help myself to... Uh, so let's cut out one of these and the, we'll chop off the selvage. Right. Now this, I, I wouldn't do this normally. I've got red thread on the sewing machine and I'm, I'm not going to change it. Um, but let me just, this is what I was doing in the break. <laughs> it was actually quite because <laughs> there's only the two of us here, and and I, I have Joe running around all over the place because I, you know, making diva demands, demanding my iron. Um, but in between the shows, so we've got we've got three minutes to change things around because we've only got this table. We're not a huge studio where other things are going on and and you know like like normal channels. Um, it's just us two and and this. Um, so in between the shows, Joe's. We're taking things out and bringing in the next things and I'm looking for an eye and I couldn't find the best press and literally we're, <laughs> we're Joe came and said the best press is on the shelf behind you live in five four three so yes I was I was about to iron before we came back to you oh now you know what it's like here and do you know I, I kind of like it <laughs> I've worked in all these big studios and it's very nice, but there's something, something quite, I was going to say intimate, but you're going to start spreading rumours if I say that. But it's, it's like just working with mates and you as well, you know, we're a, we're a small little group and I think that's quite nice. Um, so anyway, yeah, we've got um, uh, a Sound Street fan page as well on Facebook. If you haven't had a look, do have a look on there. 
I, I can't believe the amount of posts that go on. I don't go on very often, to be honest. I've got social media coming out of my ears. Um, so I don't tend to do a lot of it. Um, but when I do take a look, because we, we do a, a thing uh, with me, Vicky and John, where the, that's the three presenters here, where we pick out a make of the week. So we have to have a good old look through all the pictures that you, that you put on there. But the amount of pictures is just incredible. You are very busy people. OK, I'm just going to sew this on roughly. I am showing you how the scissors work. I just need to sew a little piece of applique out. <laughs> I'm not being indulgent. I'm not being very careful, actually, either. Um, but that's not the point of this, so... Just really quickly in a square. And I'll show you what, what the duck bill's for. Oh, that really was wobbly. That will do. You'll, you'll get the gist of this. I'm not, I'm not doing an applique demonstration. It's the scissors. So that's sewn on there. So with these scissors, you have... Come out. That's the duckbill shape. And you've got bent handles on there as well. Joe's also in charge of camera operation, which is that way. And direction, which is that way. So you can probably hear scurrying. So that's what they look like. So there's the, the duck build bit. Yeah, at least I get to stand still for the whole three hours. Um, the blade um, kind of slices over the top of the duck build side. And the handles are angled. And there are reasons for that. When you're trimming something back up to a seam line, if you're using scissors, just ordinary scissors. Let me show you with a little pair of scissors. We'll have the little ones. There is a chance, so I want to snip really close to that thread, but there is every chance that I can cut through it, or, and I'm doing that on purpose, you can stick your scissors straight through your fabric at the back. Um, with your duck build scissors, or your plique scissors, this is what they're for. So we can lay it flat for a start, because these are angled. And then we can push the duck bill up against the stitch line and it won't cut the stitches. So, so you can get really close. They're very sharp. You can use them for snipping as well. But you can get all the way into the stitch line without cutting through it. So look how close you can get there. So again, really tight, right up to this seam line and snip it. So you can get really, really close. Applique, if you are new to sewing, it's French for apply. So basically you're sticking something on something else and sewing it down. Um, so it could be um, on a quilt. Actually, on a quilt's quite a nice idea, particularly if you are new, because you can put a piece of applique, maybe a flower or a heart or an initial or something like that, over the top of seams that don't quite meet, which I think is a good idea. Um, but basically it's sewing something on top of something else. So that could be um, a label that you're sewing into a quilt or, or a garment. It could be a motif. Uh, maybe you cut a flower out of a, a piece of fabric that's fussy cutting and apply that to another piece of fabric. So it's basically decorating. But if you do have wobbly stitches, sometimes particularly when you're going around curves, you don't get that, that perfect, let me do it. You don't get that perfect curve. I've been talking about it, I may as well show you. So let's do, for instance, a heart. Wouldn't normally cut a heart out of this fabric, but I didn't want to waste any more. Could have used the charm pack, actually. Oh, Leslie's messaged in this morning. Hi, Leslie. Lovely to see me in your living room. Lovely to be in your living room, Leslie. And she's truly thankful to us all. Thank you very much. Oh, that is so nice of you. She says, thank you very much to all of the staff, the warehouse staff, the on-team staff. They, they've got so many people working, very few people working here and a lot of people working from home. Um, but she's just saying thank you for bringing us the show still. That is really sweet of you. Thank you. And it's sunny in North... Back in a sec. Oh, oh, oh. And it's sunny in Northwest England as well, apparently. Just having a, a, a bit of 505. But it's very windy. But it's a good excuse to sit and watch some sewing. I'm with you on that one. Okay, so I'd use Bondo. 
for that normally, but um, I am going to choose a blanket stitch or a pin stitch. So just something basic, where are we? Let's go for an 04 one. In mode two. This machine's coming up in the next hour, by the way. Yep, that's the one I want. And I'm just going to go around the curve badly. <laughs> Don't say that very often. I'm going to do a bit of bad sewing now. But this is the kind of thing that... Oh, that's going a bit quick around there. That'll do. This is the kind of thing that can happen, particularly when you're sewing curves. Because it can be quite difficult to follow, the, particularly when we're sewing quickly, to follow the line all the way around. And this can happen. This is where your applique scissors come into their own because, again, you can get right up to those stitches and trim back. Actually, I wouldn't use a bonder web on this one because I wouldn't be able to trim it, would I? But right up to the stitch line, look. Couldn't really get much closer than that. Couldn't do that with scissors. And I certainly couldn't do it with my shears. It's also a really nice um, shape by having the kind of the angled aspect. If, you're, if you have got something to trim and you want to keep your work flat. So, you know, if you're, um, if you're embroidering in the hoop maybe and things are kept very taut, then you can kind of snip your threads off flatly. And it's great for machine embroidery too. Those are, they've actually got oil on them. How are, they're, they're, really, they're really well made and it's nice to see the oil on there as well because that just means they're going to glide. Wipe that off when you get them home. That's just to protect the scissors and keep them lubricated and keep them going. Um, if you've got an embroidery machine and you have jump stitches, these are a nice little sharp pair of scissors that you can get right in there to, again, cut through your jump threads and then you can tidy them right back if you need to as well. These are nice shoes if you're working on upholstery as well. Um, if you're putting trims around stores, maybe um, you've covered your dining room seats and you've got, um, you know, you've stretched your fabric over, you've put your trim around the edge and then you need to cut something back. You can't, your hand's in the way normally with scissors. You can't cut flat with scissors. Your fingers are going to be in the way underneath there. So if you are trimming something right back against um, the edge of a chair or the edge of a stool or something like that, this is where these scissors again come into their own because the, ang the handles are angled away from what you're cutting. So it's not just about applique. You can cut right up to something that's flat. If you've got, you know, I don't know, a wall hanging, something that you can't get behind to actually bend so that you can get to the threads that you're chopping, does that make sense? You can cut flats with these. So think about more than just applique with those scissors. I do use mine an awful lot. Oh, now then, we have an applique mat for you, which is this. Not just for applique either. I'm going to open this up and show you because it's, it's bigger than that. <laughs> we did, when we heard applique mat, we did think, oh, and when we got to the edge, oh, but it's, that's, not, uh, that's not what it does. It's not like a cutting mat. It's a protective mat. This is mostly a bit silly, but it's really useful um, because glue isn't going to stick to this. So if you're using a hot glue gun, not going to stick. Um, if you're using... I use a lot of um, uh, HG20 Gutterman glues and it will dry on here and you can kind of pick it off again. If you're using sprays on anything, this is a nice coating for your table, so it's going to help to protect your table. Um, so absolutely non-stick and fusible webbing as well, you can apply over here as well. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of heat resistant, it's not going to, um, it's not going, nothing can stick to it basically. It's like a, just a, a knot. You can see the sheen on there, can't you? And it's like a mesh. But I find that really useful. I've got glue all over my cutting mat. And it does actually affect my rotary cutter. I get chinks coming out of it. So reduce friction. So if you are putting a plique on here, then um, the cloth can... Um, it kind of the plique pieces will adhere to it. And you can use it over and over again. It's completely reusable. It's actually Teflon glass fabric. I didn't realise it was glass. Mm. 
So, okay, so that's that. It's amazing what's out there, isn't it? What different tools and gadgets and gizmos are actually available. Right, we also have some applique pins. To put this back, so if I don't put it back now, I've got to put it back at the end of the show anyway. So bear, bear with me, I think it goes in that way. Sorry if that's very noisy at home. That'll do. Okay, we have a plique pins. I'm in here as well because you're going to want to see these. <laughs> these are tiny, so and they're in a nice little compartment. But look at the size of those. So perfect for a plique for smaller pieces of a plique. Um, and there's loads of them in there as well. How many have we got? A box full, I'd say. 150. Counted them all myself. So again, you've got, uh, they're only two centimetres or three quarters of an inch long. So they're tiny, tiny little things. And they've got uh, glass heads. So unlike with um, steel pins, you can actually see those in your work or if you drop them, which is, which is quite handy. So again, they're £6.99. All in their own little box. And you get 150 of those in the pack all together. Can't bother with that one. We have a, we have a new hero market that you may have seen me using in the previous show. Um, I was using it to actually press some seams open. It's not necessarily what it's for, but it's like a hero marker with a stiletto on the end of it. It's not it's, it's not the, the silicone ended one like we do that you can get hot near an iron. But if you're holding things down, particularly for applique, as you're sewing around here, you don't want to get your fingers too close to the sewing machine, then hold it down with the point. Um, and this side of it is for marking your fabric because it leaves a score line in your fabric. So if you don't want to use um, pens, ink pens, chalk pens, or anything like that. Um, this is just so much easier. And then that will iron away. So that could be as you're quilting, um, maybe you're gonna mark your quarter of an inch seam allowance around the edge of here before you embroider it. I'm not actually marking the fabric as in putting a die on there. It's just making a score line. And what this is also really useful for is hemming. So if you have a very fine hem to make, and I put my ruler, there we go, just got my ruler. Maybe you just want to make a quarter of an inch folded over twice hem. If you score before you fold, it's like scoring a piece of paper and you can fold along the line perfectly and you can even use this to crease on woven fabrics as well. So you can create a really, really fine hem by scoring it. You're not damaging the fabric or anything like that, um, but it's perfect for hemming. So another one of those really useful tools that probably in a store, you'd walk straight past and just think, well, it's a bit of plastic with a spike on the end. Um, it is, but it's a very useful piece of plastic with a spike on the end. So that's that one. Oh, now we've got Bondaware for you as well. This is fabulous for applique. You haven't seen it before. It's paper that has a glue coating. So the side, this, it's, it's quite rough. You don't know which one the glue is. The, the outside paper feels like um, uh, grease, grease proof paper. And then there's one side which is a little bit lumpy. That's the glue. So what you're going to do is, let's cut into my fabric again. Take your applique piece. We can cut it down to size afterwards. And Iron a little piece of this onto the back of it. I'd go slightly smaller so you don't get glue all over the place. However, you do have your non-stick mat available, remember. And, whoops, let's get my ironing board out again. Only just back in stock this one, we sold out last time. Not surprised. So your, there we go. So that goes glue side down. You can do this either way. I like to go from the paper side and then set it from the top side. So as hot as your iron, uh, as hot as your fabric will take for your iron, and that's now glued on. If you're doing raw edge applique and you don't, oh, I forgot to mention with that hero marker as well, you can do um, 
needle turn applique with a pointed end as well. Um, but if you're raw edge appliqueing, as in you're not going to fold this under, you're not going to put a hem on it at all, and you don't want your fabric to fray too much, then use Bonder Web on the back because it has a really good adhesion and it helps to stop fraying. So that I'm going to just plonk on there for now. The easiest way to get the paper off the back, because you need to do that next, is to give it a scratch and just tear it away. And you'll actually feel the glue being that's been transferred onto the fabric. So that's glued now. It's not sticky. I can move it around or anything like that until I iron it and then it becomes permanent. So this is going to help to stop the fraying around the edge of your fabric. Maybe you won't have to sew quite so many stitches and it makes a really good bond. I think particularly on larger pieces. Um, so if I've got a big piece of applique, um, even with the applique pins, you'll find that the middle bit can ruffle up a little bit like this one. You know, as I was sewing around the edge, and I did use some 505 spray on that, it's moved. I've got, a, I've got a lump in the middle. And normally, the bigger the applique piece, the more this is going to move in the center. And although 505 is an amazing product, and I use it loads of times, it's not permanent. This is. So once that is stuck on there, and it's dry, it's stuck on there. But I still sew around the edge anyway. And then I'd maybe use my applique scissors just to trim these little threads away, because those rogue threads escape. These scissors, first time you've seen them today, have been really busy. Not surprised. I, I do use these a lot. See, because you can cut flat with them. And you can cut very close with them. There. So that's stuck on. So you've got a huge roll. There's five metres in total. You'll use it if you like doing a plique, it's going to go. It may take you a few months, it may take you a few years, but it's not going to go off. So it's worth getting hold of. This idea that normally when, um, when you, the, the more you buy of something, the more affordable it becomes, doesn't it? Price per metre tends to go down the more metres you buy. Uh, so £23.99 for five metres is a really, really good price. So I'd use it, use it for... Mm. Not any kind of applique. Oh, tell me what else you can do with it. <laughs> you can draw on the back of it. So if you're creating your own applique, maybe you're making letters um, of your own design or hearts and flowers and things like that. So you'll take your, your bond web again, put that onto your fabric, and then you can draw your shape on there. So you could be drawing maybe a, a heart shape. Um, or it could be a, a letter or something, you know, whatever it is that you're making. If you're doing letters, they need to be the other way around um, <laughs> because otherwise they're going to have back to front letters. But that could, that could be a challenge, couldn't it? There. <laughs> Um, so I'd iron that onto the fabric first, then draw your design on the back, and then I wonder if you can print on it. That'd be useful, wouldn't it? I've never tried printing on it before. And you can 60 degree wash, I didn't realise it would be so so high. Um, so again, I, for me, it would be large pieces of applique particularly, and any kind of raw edge applique where I don't want fraying to occur. If you want your fabric to fray, then use your 505 spray instead. If that is a little bit too much for you, we do have a smaller pack available. And this one is 1.2 metres. So it's exactly the same, but it's just not on a roll. It's all folded up inside there. And that's only £2.99. Lots of ideas for you on there as well. Oh, I didn't realise that they'd, they'd made videos. I'm going to have a look at the video. So if you have um, a QR scanner on your smartphone, let's see what happens. So it's taken me to YouTube and oh there's lots there's lots of they're in German. Let's see if that one's in English. Yes, that's that's an English one. Go to the first one unless you want, want it in German. And that takes you to a website and 
there are videos. Oh, that's the Valise Lean website. It's taking you straight there. So you've got all of your instructions. Lots of project ideas as well. All of that. I'm going to have to look at that later on. Um, so I, I like that. I like the fact that you can have a link to a video. So, um, 2 120 centimetres by um, 175 millimetres, so 17 and a half centimetres wide. Right. Oh, gosh, we've got, we're have got we running out of time in this show, aren't we? I was going to do so much. Not going to happen. I was going to make a bag. What am I looking at? The Sashko Sash book. So, because we're all about the handwork, the hand embroidery and applique and that kind of thing in this show. So let's take a look at some simple sash co. For only £6.99. Just looking on the back then, it says £9.99. Somebody's got something wrong, haven't they? Um, this is a Susan Briscoe book. And it's, this is a, a, great, a great book for a beginner because she'll teach you the sash co. Um, stitchers, the tools that you need, markings and things like that, um, different types of threads, but then go on to projects. So there's your tote bag, greetings cards as well, so you know you don't have to challenge yourself to something huge and amazing when you start something new, you can start small and build up to cushion covers and samplers, wall hangings and the like table mat and of course you don't have to make these projects it's more i think about learning the stitches and seeing the different designs the table mat there's a leaf design and then using them for whatever you like that's a little coaster it could even be a block in a quilt i love the um the the Tansy pocket wall hanging but again this could be a little cushion cover you could use those as coasters and really simple instructions to follow and to understand. The long samples are nice, aren't they? You can imagine those over your fireplace or going up the stairs. So I've got the, an apple core design there, isn't it? But traditional designs, very modern designs, and all of your instructions and templates are in here as well. The ultimate Sashko source book is this one. Again, by Susan Briscoe. And this one actually goes into a little bit of history as well, which is really interesting. Where did it come from? What is Sashko? And exactly where did it come from? But then again, you're going to go through getting started, what you need, and there's your projects again. And this one's £11.99. Now, if I were you, if you are a complete beginner and you're just dipping your toe in the water, you've got, I wouldn't go for both books. Um, I think the 6 99 book, the initial book, is a great introduction, a little bit of a taster. Um, if you want more opportunity, more patterns, more designs, more stitches and more projects, then I go for this one. But it still takes you right back to the beginning. So, to be honest, I know it's dependent on your budget, but out of the two books, I'd go for this one. I think there's more to it. There's more to grow with you. But that's your choice. Oh, and we've got an inspiration gallery in this one as well. So this one's got the history and the inspiration as well as all of the patterns and the templates and the stitch designs for just £11.99. That's the ultimate source book. Um, we're, we're kind of running out of thread for you. We do have some navy thread. So this is um, Sashko thread. A crew's sold out now. really popular Sashka. We've had um, um, Cara Aikman, if you have a look on our YouTube channel, has done a couple of shows now with videos. Um, so you can take a look back at some of those if you like. Just put Cara into the search engine at the top of the page on the Sewing Street channel and you should find it there. This was £4, or is £4.99 is your price there. It was actually on the, uh, the 7th of April. Was it April or May? 7th of May. It was on the 7th or something. Have a look at the 7th of May. I think, we, I think she was on on the 7th of May. Um, explaining the techniques and showing you some of the stitches um, with Sashko as well. But that's only £4.99. You've got 40 metres there in total. That's, that's a lot, isn't it? Um, we also have some Sashko needles for you. So this is a set of eight. 
um, in different sizes as well, which is quite nice. So we've got four sizes in there for your five pounds and ninety nine pence. Um, last Thursday, the demo apparently for these. So eight needles there in total. Your sizes are oh, they're all on the back there. Look, they are all. If you're particular about your sizes, they are all listed on the back of the pack as well. So that's your pack of eight. And then we've got a pack of three. These are longer in length. And of course, I've got so many packets of needles in different sizes. Um, I end up with a favourite. And there's some needles I just don't like. But I like, a, I like to sew whatever I'm sewing with a very long needle. Unless I'm hand quilting something, in which case a shorter needle is going to be more appropriate. And of course, thickness of needles is um, important depending on what weight of fabric that you're going to use. But these are nice long needles as well. So not just for Sashko, looser weave of fabrics. These would be perfect on so they're not going to leave big holes in there. Or if you're making toys, um, and you want to sew straight through the head of a teddy bear to take the eye from one side to the other. They're not dull needles, but they are quite long needles, so you'll find those useful for that as well. So, let's take a look at some of the kits we have. I don't think they're new to Sewing Street, but they're new to me, these ones. Um, let's have a look at Cumulus Clouds to start with. These are pre-printed um, navy fabric, so you're going to need some pale colour. Don't, don't go for the, the, the navy thread that we've got with this one, because you won't see it. Um, so probably in a crew or a white or a cream if you can find one. And I'm not going to take them out of the packets, um, because you can see the design here. Uh, the stitches, you're, you're just going to, it's like a template, so you're just going to sew over the top of the design, but these marks will wash away. So don't pre-wash your fabric because your pattern will disappear, but that means it doesn't matter that you have to be exact in your positioning of the stitches. Great if you are, but not the end of the world if you're not, because they do wash away. This is what you're going to make. So this is a, a finished sample of this one. So the front and the back of the fabrics included in there as well. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six different stitch designs on there as well. And you're getting the backing included. So that's the panel. You make what you like with it. You could even put some um, heat resistant wadding on the inside and make placemats out of it would be nice or pot holders. That could be actually if you go for a few, you could actually make up a quilt top with them. But nice little panels. You do, you do what you like with them. So that is Cumulus Cloud. And this one is Dragonfly. That's a different one for the Dragonfly. Um, and that's your design in the centre there. So you can see you've got the, um, the two, no, all the Dragonflies and then these different designs either side as well. Nice big stitches on there. I, I, that's what I like about Sashko. You don't have to be, you know, fiddling with tiny, tiny little stitches. And you can put quite a few stitches on your needle at the same time. That's £12.99. It's the same size as the previous one, so it's 12 by 12. Then we have Noshi. Oh, it's like a bouquet of ribbons. That's a really pretty one. There's flowers on this one as well. You can see there's a bow tied around them. It's really pretty. That's £12.99. And, and remember, these are washouts, so you don't have to be exact and precise as you're sewing. Nice if you are, but you know. Aranami is coming up next. So is that, is that Japanese for rabbits by any chance? There's a couple of rabbits on there. I must ask my son. He's teaching himself Japanese while he's furloughed. Um, again, £12.90, it's doing very well actually, £12.99 is your price there, 12 by 12 again is your size, and you can just see the little, little rabbits on there. And then we have Seasons, which is this one. Shall I take it out and show you? Right, so that's what you're going to embroider. Your instructions are here. So when you've finished your embroidery and you've followed your instructions, wash this 
and then all of the ink will disappear and that will make the back of your mat. It's a good idea, isn't it? Makes it really simple. And it's, it's not cheating either. If you, because uh, I was thinking if you were going to do this without this kind of template, you'd be drawing this on there anyway. So the only thing that's been taken out of your hands is to put the transfer onto the fabric already. That is lovely. And that's not it. But it looks a bit like that, but a different pattern. <laughs> £12.99, again, all of your instructions included there too. Shall we open another one? No, right, let's have a look at Aranami. So that's your design. With the leaping bunnies, are they in clouds or water? So you've got your basic, sash, basic sash coat instructions on the back and how to make them at as well. So the ink on this print is water soluble. Yeah, don't, don't use a steam iron. Um, <laughs> no, if you're going to press the creases up before you start sewing, don't use steam, don't wet it, don't use a best press um, because all of your lines will disappear. So... So no steam, again, remember. So really detailed, isn't it? So you've got a little leaping rabbit here and another leaping rabbit here. Oh, that's, that means something, doesn't it? That, that probably says Aranami. I don't know. And then you've got swirls of, uh, they could be clouds, they could be water. A bit different, this one, really pretty. And then your instructions on the other side are very, very clear. So even showing you how to do the stitches. But remember, have a look at the 7th, last Thursday, and um, you should see some... Uh, I've got jump stitches on there as well. Oh. Um, you'll see a demonstration from Cara on how to actually make those. Right, let's take a look at some more, because we've got some white posters as well, which have been pre-printed. Um, spend all day putting things back in packets, couldn't we? They are here. So, there's four, you can go for the blue with this one, the blue thread. Um, there's four coasters in there, so you can see the four different designs, and uh, they're all different, so there's four different styles of coasters. It's the same as before, so all of these um, prints are going to disappear. These don't have the instructions printed on the back, I don't think, I think they're on the packaging. I uh, shan't open it. Um, but there you can really see those four different designs. So with the blue thread it would look amazing, but if you wanted to choose your own colour, that's entirely up to you. It could be, I don't know, black or red or anything you like. I think more traditional to go for the blue, but you choose whatever colour you like. And again, that's £14.99, so that one is Cosmo. Oh, they're all Cosmo. Um, probably say on your screen, won't it? Let's have a look at the grey one. I think we're just calling that white. This one's the grey one. So again, you've got four coasters in here. They're different designs to each other, but they're also different designs to the, any of the other um, kits that we have for you. So those are they. So little crosses. Bit more intricate this one than the previous one. And I love the grey in the background. So I think you could use any colour on this one. Black would look stunning. The blue would look amazing. But I think if you can go for a cream or a white on grey would look very, very stylish. And remember, all of this washes away. So don't worry if you don't go over the lines precisely. Need to give you a reminder of those applique cases. I'm glad you go for these. I think it's another one of those things where you'll see them uh, or you may walk straight past them thinking they're specialist or something or not realise exactly what they're for. But these are little bent-handled scissors. I was just looking for my applique bits. Lost them as well now. Honestly, don't go anywhere. Lose everything. 
but this is what these are for. You have a bent handle so that you can cut things flat. You imagine if I'm trying to cut flat with a pair of scissors and I really want to trim down here, I can't because I can't get in there because my fingers are in the way, it's not keeping it flat. Um, it's okay if we do this and put your fingers behind it, but if you're in the hoop or if you've got something stretched over a canvas or something like that, you can't do that. This is what these scissors have been designed for. So they've got a nice flat bill shaped blade here. The handles go up so you can get your fingers inside there and keep the blade flat on your work. So now you can really get in tight to areas that need trimming. But for a plique, such a good idea. If you've understitched, if your stitches don't go right up to the edge of your applique, because that flat blade sits underneath the excess fabric, it won't go through the stitches, it's, that bit's not sharp, it's this blade that's sharp, that one's not. So this blade cuts against the flat plate instead of cutting against another blade, and you can cut very, very close to your stitches, and this bit won't allow your scissors, or the blade of your scissors, to go through the stitch. So you can cut very, very close without actually going through, as you can see there. So for trimming away small threads in your embroidery hoop, maybe, for getting very close in, if, say if you've, if you've missed a little bit as you're going around your applique, you can really get in there and trim it back. But they're also nice little scissors. You know, you, you can snip into points and things with them. They do have a very pointy point. So I think you'll find these really useful. Now, a big embroidery book I want to give you a reminder of as well. Oh, this is a workout, isn't it? This is a really big, heavy book. It's £25 and it's brought to you by the Royal School of Needlework. There are so many different techniques in here. What I like about it is the way that you can just flip through and you see something, um, something new every time you look at it. There's so much in here. Um, lots of different styles as well. So there's an introduction to red work and black work and gold work and white work and lots of others as well. If you just have a look at the back there. Some of the, I love the penguins, look at those. And they look like photographs. It doesn't even look like embroidery. So have a quick look through. And if you've been watching for the whole of the show, this will be the third time you've seen it, and I bet you see something new in here that you haven't seen before. So, I love the black work. So you've got all of your stitches, um, types of threads recommended and all that kind of thing, um, a few different design styles, things to know before you start sewing. Those are the different stitches that you can use, and then we've got some project, oh that's nice. I love the lion one. So it's something for everybody. Some very traditional designs, some very modern designs. But one of those books that I, I think it's going to take you a long time to actually get around to making a project because you'll be looking at this and learning from it and maybe practicing techniques first of all. And I like the history of things as well. The black work I think is amazing. I didn't notice that one before. But then we go on to show you how you can create your own designs as well. It's gold work, Japanese gold work, sewing on pearls, spangles, so much in here. Um, and again, it's £25. That's a lovely book. Um, okay, oh, that's, oh, that's gone really quickly, hasn't it? We've gone over 10 minutes. Um, right, we're going to take a quick break and um, we're going to be featuring the 720 sewing machine and the air thread overlocker in the next hour. So pop back here again in about five minutes. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday.
shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello there, welcome back to Sewing Street. Now in this part of the show, we're going to be looking at overlockers. I know, really difficult to thread, aren't they? That's why you don't have one. They take ages, you appreciate what they do, you'd love to use one, but you just can't be bothered to thread them. This is the air thread, I'll show you that in just a second. It makes life so much easier. I have one of these at home. I've got the Janome version of it, but it's exactly the same, and I love it. Um, my daughter, who's uh, she's gone dressmaking mad. 
she's gonna she her ambition is to have a completely handmade wardrobe and at the moment she's going at the rate of an outfit a day so yesterday she made a blouse it was lovely from her own pattern everything nothing to do with me uh, and it was a crossover one with a frill around the neckline and elastic around the hems and all of the hems and around the frill she'd used my overlocker um, with a rolled hem feature and then created a less I think she's making pajamas today it was going to be a little leisure outfit with short snut anyway. Um, as a dressmaker, even as a beginner, is where I was getting around to, you get a, a really lovely finish that you can't achieve on the sewing machine. And if you're making to sell or you're making to gift or you just want whatever it is you're making to last a long time, this is really worth the investment. I, I think once you start using an overlocker, you'll never go back. It's not going to replace your sewing machine, but it will be a very happy marriage between your machine and your overlocker. Um, I paid £850 for mine, and I would pay it again. It's worth every penny. Your price, right here, just £6.99, your price there. So I'll take you through what it is, what it does, and how to in just a second. Um, I just want, oh, if you've got any questions, by the way, if you've got your overlocker already, come and let me know. Christine, I'm getting round to you with your nesting problem. Um, Facebook uh, for questions if you want to ask anything live in the show, please. And that's the Sewing Street TV site page. This is overlocker thread. Um, you'll need to use cones with overlockers because you're going to use a lot of thread. But an overlocker thread tends to be quite fine and very smooth um, because you, the, the, the thread's going over the fabric so much. So I wouldn't use anything else in my overlock. You can use thread. You can buy specialist thread. You can use a metallic thread. You can buy fluffy overlocker threads. Um, you can use embroidery thread, um, but you may find that um, you're using an awful lot of it. So overlocker thread is recommended, and this is a load of overlocker thread. We have four cones of black. These are all your basic colours as well. This is what you're going to use most of all. There are four cones of dark grey. You've got four cones of light grey. There are four cones of white, there are four cones of off-white, and guess what? There are four cones of cream as well, all for £74.99. Four cones because you have a four-thread overlocker. If you want to make that go a little bit further, then just use three threads. I must admit I use three threads on my overlocker for most projects, unless I want a really, really strong seam. So this is a fabulous kit to have. All in the box, all carpent compartmentalized and there are 24 threads in total for £74.99 that is such a good price that works out at under three pounds each about two pounds sixty I'm guessing completely there but that seems to make sense to me three pound twelve pence it was close wasn't it three pound twelve pence each um, but on here you've got 1200 meters there's a there's a lot on the spools there so that's worth popping on your order You'll get through it, but it'll take you a while to get through it. And most of the time with your overlocker threads, you don't see them um, unless you're uh, like Kim was with the edges of her blouses where she was using the, the rolled hem feature um, so you can see the thread. But for most of them, it doesn't really matter about the colour. So neutral colours are probably going to be the best way to go for you. Right, that's £74.99. Shall we have a look at this machine? All of your instructions included in there, and as with any machine that you're buying from Elna, you have a two-year warranty as well, so you've got a peace of mind. Elna are a British-based company, they're based in Stockport in Cheshire, they have a helpline, they're very nice people. So if you do have any issues or problems or you lose your instruction manual or something happens, give them a bell. They're very nice and they'll be able to help you out. So let me show you what an overlocker does first of all, so if you're not sure... If you have a stretch fabric or woven fabric, you're going to be able to finish off the seam, so therefore your thread wraps around the edge of the fabric, while at the same time a blade inside here is trimming your fabric back. So that's the difference between this one and the sewing machine, it has a blade. Leave the foot down all the time, you don't need to lift it up, so you can simply push the front of that underneath, and then start to sew. And you can see at the side here, if I just try and turn it around on a non-slip mat, um, I'll sew from this angle just so you can see that blade chopping and then I'll, I'll twist it back round. But you can see munch, 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 chopping away at the side while at the same time sewing very quickly over the edge of your fabric. When you've finished your stitch line, 
Let's put that back again on a non-slip mat. Not easy. Um, <laughs> carry on sewing. That's the difference with the sewing machine as well. Sewing machines don't like sewing with no fabric underneath there. Part of Christine's problem. We'll do that later. Um, overlockers don't mind, and you're supposed to do that. So when you start, you should have a chain of stitches at the start. And when you finish, chain it off. So carry on stitching until you've got a couple of each inches of thread here, and then snip it off. But that's the look that we want. Now, I put four different colours of thread in here. You wouldn't normally do that because I wanted to identify for you the role of each one of the stitches. Some of this needs adjusting slightly. So we have a white and a yellow um, straight stitch. And then I've got a red and a blue looper stitch. I can see the white stitch on this fabric is rather loose. This is where a lot of people get a bit worried because I'm going to talk tensions now and there are four tensions on the machine but it's a case of playing with them just adjusting them until you get the right tension now there's there's two things that can happen so you really have to play with your fabric my white thread was too loose I could try tightening that slightly don't go mad and tighten it all the way up just try to tighten it slightly but it may be that one of the other threads is too tight um, and is pulling the thread through. You do, there's different reasons for it. There's no, there's no rule book. So I've tried just tightening the white slightly. Oh, just come off there. It's tightened it a little bit, but not enough. So let's try just increasing those two slightly. It doesn't need to be very much. To say this is the first time I've touched the tension on this machine. That's better. That's given me a much nicer finish. But you'll need to do that for every single different fabric that you're working on. So always, always practice a little bit first. So for instance, I've got stretch fabric here. I'm going to reset all of these back to number three because this is a new fabric. Um, when you've been using your machine for a while and you've sewn a few different um, types of fabric, you could make a note of the tension settings that work best for you. So you see, I've reset this back again, and my blue thread is too loose on this one. So it could be the blue thread that needs tightening, or it could be the red thread that needs loosening. But keep practicing. And do you go again? So very small adjustments make do really do make a difference. I've got the red one looping too much now on that one. So I'm going to loosen that one off and tighten that one up. And just keep playing. I'll go I could I could go through that for a while, but I want to show you the threading on this one as well. Um, so oh, oh and you've got a differential on here too while well, well, you're just there. Underneath the presser foot, you've actually got two sets of feed dogs. At the moment, they're both running at the same time. Ah, stitch length needs adjusting, that's why. Um, so they're both moving at the same rate to draw the fabric through from the back to the front. But we do have a differential button, which is around the side. <laughs> Non-stick mat. It works. On the side here, you've got a stitch length and a differential. The differential adjusts the rate at which these feed teeth are feeding your fabric through. So if I turn this high, then I'm going to get um, a gathered effect. The, the, I always get a little bit confused about, am I going high, am I going to low? If I turn it high, it'll gather because the front um, feed dog is going to work faster than the back one and it pushes the fabric through quicker than the back one's pulling it through. If I go low then I can stretch the fabric because on the other extreme the front um, feed dog is working slower than the back one so it's going to pull the fabric so it'll stretch it out and you can encourage that by pulling it even more. So there's lots of different effects you can have just by playing with the um, the differentials here as well. Always, when you're buying a new sewing machine, overlocking machine, whatever, have a play with it when you get it home. Try, I mean, read through the instructions first of all, and then try the different features. <laughs> I must have a, a non, non-slip mat for these kind of things. Right, this is what I wanted to show you. Are you ready? Now see, it's not as complicated as a normal overlocker. But there's a lot of gubbins in here. 
and there's a lot of gubbins over here. And this is the thing that normally puts people off um, buying an overlocker because you think, well, if I have to do this every time I change my thread, you don't have to do that at all. You can knock the threads off. That'll be explained in your booklet. But by having the air threading system, the, you, you don't really take, need to take any notice of this. So what I'm going to do, pop that back. You don't need to go in that side unless it's for cleaning. I'm going to chop off all of the threads. The machine won't work with the door open. And I'm just going to chain this off. Pull that out slightly. Put the foot down, Deborah. Oh, I'm trying to do this backwards. There we go. So that's the all of the thread all the way through. So that's the needle thread, that's the upper and the lower looper thread, that's all the thread coming out of the machine. Then we can open it back up again and again, put down to the floor. Nothing's going to happen here. Nothing to see. So I do need to turn that slightly, I'm afraid. Right. So always start with this machine from the left hand side and we're going to do blue, then red, then yellow, then white. Always have a look in your manufacturer's instructions, yours may vary from that, but generally I think with overlockers you always start from the right hand side. So you're going to go up through the, the thread guide at the top here. That's an up periscope, when you're storing it, it'll go down periscope. And then go through the tensions. So there's a clip at the top. The tension discs are behind here. Um, you can't see them on camera, but you can see them when you look inside there. They look like two pie dishes, two saucers. Just make sure that your thread is engaged in between. Oh, you can see them there, can't you? Is engaged in between there. So pull it tight until, until it feels tight when you're threading. As you come down to the front here, we want to go into threading mode. So this lever needs to come across here. This is the first hole I'm going to thread in, so we'll point that over there. And then just before we start, I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me and I want you to see what happens down here. So now I've got tubes that the thread's going to go down. So take the end of your thread. I'm just going to get some tweezers out of the box because I find it easier to use the tweezers there we go. And then you'll need to feed the end of the thread in by... I'm convinced somebody's been using my tweezers, you know. No, nobody else has used this machine. Right. You'll need to thread this into the hole at the top by about an inch. So I'm going to pull the thread so it's all quite loose so you can see what's actually happening in there. Oh, and that needs to be up. Right, so that goes into that left hole. I'm just gonna hold it there. Whoops, and then press this lever down. And you can see it's shot in there. And it's shot out here. It's there already. So if I wanted to pump that through again, just make it a little bit longer, give it a bit more slack. There we go. So that's the upper looper. Now take this just in front of the blade and then behind the foot and out of the way. Then we do the same with the second one. So under the clip, feel your way in between the tension discs. Oh, sorry, there is another clip there. Little clip here. This time I need to move this bar to point at where I'm going. Again, I'm going to pull that quite loose. Whoops, so I've just dropped my tweezers. All of your instructions are on the front of the machine, you can see here, but they're inside the lid as well. And of course you've got your instruction booklet. Go on down. So again, just drop that in by about an inch. I don't think I've got that. No, a bit longer. In you go. Backwards, upside down. It should be easy to thread from whatever direction, standing on your head. <laughs> now, normally I'd be right in front of this with my nose over the top of it. Come on, in you go. So that goes in there. Have we got it? Not yet. Tell you what helps actually when you've got thread that's a bit bendy. There's a bit of hairspray on it. Leave it to dry. That's got it. 
there. And this one, whoops, I shot out here. So that's threaded. So that's kind of demystified the threading of the upper and the lower looper. That, <laughs> I, always, I always think of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the mystery of the upper looper. Um, right, I do need to turn this around towards me. Remember to put this down and remember to flick this switch across to take those channels away, else the machine won't sew and you'll wonder what you've done wrong. Then we can close this back up again and I'll need to turn it towards me to thread the needles. There is a needle threader, even though there's two needles. So again, I'm still going from left to right. If any of your thread breaks as you're sewing, which can happen, you're sewing at very high speed with this machine, um, unthread it all and thread again right back from the beginning. I know it seems a bit of a pain, um, but if you get your, your red thread, for instance, so the, the third, third one along, if that breaks, it's easy to just re-thread it, but then you'll find it breaks again. I don't know how that works, but it is recommended that you thread, thread them all again. So just like with the sewing machine, it's gone through the tensions. You're going to go across the bottom and follow the direction of the arrows. Uh, this is going in the right-hand side, so I've got a right-hand hole there. And then around, I'm just going to open this up to get that out of the way. Just around the right hand hook here. Oh, no, it goes that side, no, that's it. And then make sure that the needle's as high up as it'll go. You'll notice also that the needles aren't even, that's deliberate. Because you're sewing at such high speed, if that was a normal twin needle and they were both bashing through the fabric at the same time, um, they could puncture the fabric. So this is almost like creating a chisel kind of effect. So the needles glide into the fabric instead of chopping into it. So don't worry about that. That's not one needle dropping out. So I can move the needle threader over to the right hand side. And this is just like my needle threader on a sewing machine. Oh, that's a bit stiff. Pull that back, out you go. And then I've got the loop at the side there. Why aren't you going back? Playing up. But the needle's threaded, so that's okay. So that is the right needle. And then finally, I'm going through the same channel, over the top, down the side, and then into the left-hand channel here, through that one there, and then the left needle threader. So just pull that across and it'll autom automatically find the left needle under the... Oh, stay! Stay! Ah, up, up, up. Under there, under there, pull it through. That's your second needle threaded. And now we're ready to go. So again, just under the needle, in front of that blade. Doors open so it's not going to sew at the moment. And... Let's give it a let's give it a go. So it's just like we've got a sewing machine to bring you as well. That's why I'm looking at my watch. I'm not getting bored. Um, and then start to sew. We haven't got a clock on the telly here. Chain it off. Snip it off. And that is perfect. So you can see the white straight stitch, the yellow straight stitch and the red and the blue meeting just on top of the fabric. And this is a stretch stitch for a stretch fabric. Now you can use this as your seam allowance, um, but do be aware that you've got a, well, it's just over a quarter of an inch deep. So if you're dressmaking and your seam allowance on your pattern says five eighths of an inch, this won't be five, five eighths of an inch, it'll be smaller. Um, but it's a lovely decorative effect and it's a nice way to finish your seams as well. Whatever it is you're wearing at the moment, just have a look inside the seam. If it's shop bought and whether it's knitwear or sweatshirt or anything like that, if you're wearing something that's shop bought, you will have an overlock finish seam on the inside because it stops it from fraying and it gives it a nice professional finish as well. But certainly on stretch fabric, there's so many of you working with stretch fabrics at the moment because you don't need buttons, you don't need zips, you probably don't need darts in there. It's a really simple, comfortable fabric um, to work with and to wear. It's really popular. So if you're, if you're using a lot of stretch fabric, then definitely I would recommend that you get an overlocker. You'll find it so much easier and there's effects that you can create as well. So I'm going to take one of the needles out and we'll have a look at the rolled hem. So this is the one that I was saying that Kim uses um, a lot in her dressmaking at the moment. That's my daughter. So I'm going to open this up 
to stop it working. So just in case I accidentally tread on the pedal. Um, you do have a needle holder in here. I, I don't get on with it too well, to be honest, but try. So I'm going to cut off the white thread. We'll do a very narrow roll time. You can do either. And basically, you're only going to use one needle. So you still have the upper and the lower looper um, on the right-hand side. So the red and the blue are still going to sew. The yellow needle is going to sew, and it's the, the white one that I'm taking out. So this hooks underneath the needle. Let me just pull the thread out. Come out. There we go. In fact, I'll chain that off. Just to get the white thread out of the machine. So lift the needle right up. And this has a, a, a tiny cup shape, which goes under your needle. Whoops. So this is why I find it a bit fiddly, but you know, it might be something that you like and that grips onto the needle. That can also hold the needle in place while you're putting it back in again. It's important, I think, to hold onto the needle in some respect or even put a piece of paper or fabric underneath there to stop the needle dropping inside the machine if you, if you let it loose. However, with this machine, you can open the left-hand side of it, so if something does drop inside, you should be able to get it out. So that's not coming, there we go. I stick that in the cone of thread at the top so I know where it is, so that's stuck in here. Then tighten the little screw back up again. The machine sews at such a speed that uh, the vibration could shake the screw loose. And we don't want loose screws because you won't be able to sew with the needle without it and it doesn't come with spares. So that's just tightened up again. Okay, so let's take a look at what that hem looks like with three needles and then we'll have a play with the differential and create some effects. So this time, this isn't the rolled hem, this is just three needle, um, three thread sewing. So even though it's a four thread machine, you can sew with three threads. So that's what you're going to have. So this time we've only got one straight stitch from the yellow and the red and the blue looping over the top. Just to show you really quickly the difference. That wasn't a very good one. The diff Ooh, difference with the four thread is that. So the four thread, th those are your two needle stitches and the stitch is deeper. So that's as narrow as we can go there, but you can adjust the width of the stitch with a dial on the front here. So that's, uh, I've got a stitch length, which is on the side and then I've got a stitch width, which is down here. But we're going to do a rolled hem, a very fine rolled hem. If I saw so myself, it is very fine. So have a look down here anyhow while you're there. Um, so this is your stitch width, and all that does is simply move the blade in one direction or another um, to make the stitch wider as it's trimming the fabric. You can remove the blade. Um, you may need to change the blade at some point if it, if it blunts, but you can move it out of the way by, can you see that if I do that? So, where's my blade? There we go. Just poking up there, like a little swan. Um, by twisting this, you push it in and out of the way, the blades drop down. But for this roll on a lot of machines, um, on a lot of machines, you will be asked to remove the blade. What have I done there? When you're sewing a rolled hem, so I need to turn that back around to me um, because you don't want the thread to drop off. But with this one, we do want it to drop off. Well, that's really fluffy inside there. So I think that needs cleaning. Down, up. Well, well, you devil. Ha. I've disengaged the blade and it won't come back up again. Bear with me. I'm going to do it. Well, we can do a rolled hem without a blade. 
I do apologise, that hasn't happened before. I must have a look in the manual and see why that's not popping back up again. Also around this side, we'll do it without, because you can do. We have a, an R and an S. The S is for standard sewing, the R is for rolled hem, so that needs to go over here. Also on the dial here, sorry, the big one, is an R setting. So that's R for rolled hem. So let's see what happens without a blade. I'd better get the instruction book out, haven't I? It's come up now, hasn't it? Playing up on me. Right. So I'm on stretch fabric. Let's pop this underneath. And again, you're going to want to play with this. You may need to adjust the settings. You may need to adjust the, uh, the tension. You may want a smaller stitch length. But that's what you're going to get. So it's a better on that side. You get a very, very fine, tiny hem, which is rolled over the edges of the fabric. And it just gives a really neat finish. And again, it stretches, so it's perfect for stretch fabrics. But let's have a play with that differential as well. The differential is in the center of the, the stitch length. So I'm still on R over here. And let's um, up, tighten up, tighten up. The way I think about it is, because I always forget whether I'm, whether I'm gathering high or low. Um, if, you're, if you're gathering up, turn the dial up. And if you're waving, it's down, so that will stretch it. So this should gather. It's not, um, it's not a really brilliant gather, like pulling up the threads on something or using a gathering or a ruffling foot, which are available, but not from us. Um, it, it's mainly for flattening out your fabrics. So if you're making a, a seam and you find it's puckering a little bit, may not necessarily be the tension, it may be the differential that just needs to be evened out a little bit, just to stretch the fabric a bit as it goes through. But if you are gathering... I did take that out, didn't I? Yes. This gives a nice, gentle gather. So again, that is the, the front stitch. See, it's not massive, but you have got a bit of a gather going on. Um, so that's the front pushing the fabric in at a different rate to the back. And let me wind that all the way down and we'll stretch it. So this time, not only is the, is the differential creating a bit of a wave, I'm stretching the fabric as well. I'm not distorting it under the needle, so it's still passing under the needle at the same rate as it should do but I'm just stretching it before it goes in and pulling it out on the other side as well. And you can see there, if you just come off, you've got that lovely wavy edge. And that's really effective as a hem, particularly if you're using um, a contrast colour of thread. That's, that that's makes a really pretty effect. So again, have a play. Have a play with the different tensions and the different stitch lengths and the different effects. You can go around curves and you can go around corners as well. And there's everything, let me show you the instruction booklet. There, there's everything in here that you need to know. There's even a section on the extra feet that you can buy to go with it as it grows with you. Um, so all in, uh, you know, lots of pictures and words. You can flop, uh, flat lock with the machine as well. Shan't be doing that in this hour, we don't have time. But all of the threadings in here, um, and it's very clearly and well explained. Now remember you're getting a two year warranty as well. So I think it's an ideal opportunity to, to have a go. If you've never used an overlocker before, you're just going to find this so useful. And as I said previously, oh, that's what I didn't do. Oh. Um, <laughs> normally when you're sewing a rolled hem, you are asked in your instructions to tighten up the tensions. This machine's got a button on the front that is standard or tight. So apart from the rolled hem bit, I should have gone over to tight, but it worked anyway, so don't worry too much about that. Remember to put all your settings back again afterwards. So that goes back to standard, that goes back up to a regular stitch length, and my differential goes back to, we'll put it on one and a half to feed that through. And then I'll put the needle back in again for two reasons. One, so I can carry on sewing with four needles, and secondly, next time we come to the machine, I want it to have two needles in it. 
So we need to unscrew this. And put the need. Oh, right, we're running out of time, aren't we? Right, OK. Um, shall I do that later on? Because I wanted to answer Christine's question. Um, Christine had a question about um, uh, threads nesting underneath the edge of the fabric when she starts sewing. Uh, we do have, I'll, I'll answer that in just a second when we get the 720 out. Um, we do have um, my sewing surgery, sewing street surgery, which is on the first Monday of the month. So if you do have questions like that and I'm not here, load them onto our Facebook page and um, we'll collate all of the questions over the next few weeks and answer them all on the next Monday, the Monday of June. So again, send your questions to me via Facebook. We'll get them all together and we'll answer them. So we'll change over and show you hopefully a solution to your, um, to your issue, Christine, in just a second. So facebook.com forward slash Sewing Street. So go to the Sewing Street Facebook page and you should see an event there for the next Monday. The first Monday in June is going to be the next Sewing Street. Any questions you like. We, we do have a lot of questions about tensions, actually. Um, but if you've got anything that you don't understand, anything particular that you'd like to see, if you have a bit of jargon um, that you don't understand that you need explaining, then I'm your girl. So just come and ask the question. And the nice thing is about getting these so far in advance is that if I need to buy anything in um, specifically to show you, then we can do that. So the sooner you get your questions in, the sooner we can um, get you sorted out and get you back up and running again, hopefully. Um, if you wanted to leave any questions or comments in the show today, which we haven't got much time left, I'm rabbiting on so much. Um, we've got about 10 minutes for you to come through on that Facebook page again and, um, and ask any questions that you have or post your pictures or let us, let us see your comments as well. It'd be lovely to hear from you if you'd like to come through to the show today. So, right, Christine, are you ready, Miss Christine O'Brien? Let's see if we can solve your problem. With a fabulous sewing machine, I have to say. You don't see, see what we did there? See what we did? Seamless, Joe says. <laughs> right. Ooh. This studio is so small. <laughs> and uh, I've got my teas made down here. That's my sewing box. So, <laughs> right. This is the Elna 720. This is the, um, the upgrade to the sewing machine that I use at home. I absolutely adore it. Um, the ease of sewing and everything that comes with it, because you get a big chocolate box full of goodies with it as well. Um, it is a very fast sewing machine. You're sewing at about 1,250 stitches a minute, which is on a par with the overlocker. Same kind of speed. That's why I bought my machine, mainly for the speed and mainly because it's a tough old thing that will be able to sew through layers and layers of fabric or sew through heavier fabrics as well. Um, I paid more than £1,399 for mine and again, I'd do it again, but this, this, is the, this has more features than my machine does. It is simple to use. Um, it's very heavy, I have to say. I, I can't actually lift it. Um, I can't mine at home and the the reason I like it being so heavy, because this is all cast, it's, it's not plastic based, it's all cast. Um, so this is really, really solid. But that gives it the power and the punch to go through heavier weights of fabric and to keep the speed going without shaking all over the table. So I'll go through all of the stitches and everything in just a second, but I want to show you a few of them that I've already stitched out. And do. I consider the overlocker. When you get a new machine home, just sit and sew, just on scrap pieces of fabric, have a look at those stitches and what they look like. Those are they. We've got the alphabet on here as well, in different fonts, and we've got numbers. But I love things like stitch, stitch, stitch. That's an actual st the stitch. So that, that's the stitch. These are quilting stitches. Um, I love the washing line. I made a peg bag yesterday on Facebook. And I was saying that uh, if I had this machine at home, I could do a washing line around the, around the opening. Um, we've got hearts and mannequins and little cats. You can stitch each one of these stitches out individually by using the lock stitch. Handmade is one stitch. You could, you could stitch that onto, um, onto ribbons and label whatever it is you're making. And while you're there, you can twin needle sew. 
So this is the effect that you can create. There's also a twin needle um, function that will disable any other stitches that aren't suitable for twin needle sewing. And there's a memory. You can join stitches together. You've got lots of different buttonhole stitches on here as well, which are all one step. And we can mirror image, you can memory, you can write. There's so much you can do with the machine. It is, it's worth a play. So we've got utility stitches. Um, when you choose a stitch, the uh, stitch length and tensions and width will be automatically preset. You can override those. The stitches that are greyed, you can mirror image in four directions. The satin stitches you can extend by up to five times without them losing their shapes. And we've got different needle positions. There's a straight stitch plate included and you've got a professional grade needle plate which will only allow you to stitch these stitches. There's a professional grade foot included and that will give you perfect straight stitching without any of these stitches puckering. And just on the other side you have the alphabet and you've got numbers there as well. And just really quickly because we have seen all of these before so I'll just really quickly take you through everything else that you're getting in the box. So you've got a walking foot, so that is your professional grade uh, straight stitch foot. We've got lots of different types, of, well three, different types of um, free motion embroidery feet, um, over edge foot, quarter inch foot with guide, blind hem foot, adjustable um, foot, uh, free motion foot, zipper foot underneath, oh, rolled hem foot, satin stitch foot, open toed satin stitch foot and then inside here you've got two extra plates, so your straight st stitch plate and your high performance straight stitch plate and there's your buttonhole foot, there's a seam lifter, there's another free motion embroidery foot oh and you've got a button placement foot in there as well and you've got spare bobbins, so sorry that was really quick but have a look past on previous shows and I'll go through a lot of those feet and demonstrate them in detail as well. Am I talking really quickly because we're running out of time? I feel, I feel like I'm... Blah, 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 blah. Okay, Christine. Christine put a message on... Yeah, play, play me back in slow-mo if you're watching on YouTube. Um, Morning, Debbie and Co. said Christine. I hope you're still there. Uh, how can I stop a bird's nest at the beginning of sewing after using the scissors button? Couple of things. If you're starting right on the edge of fabric, it may be worth just pulling your thread out a little bit anyway. I know what it's like though, you get into the habit of just using that scissor function all the time and it can lead to your machine trying to chew up fabric. So this is the problem. I don't think I can do it on purpose. It probably won't let me. Um, a scissor function has been used and I'm going to start just off the edge. No, it's not doing it. Um, but sometimes, particularly with fine fabrics, the very edge of your fabric can get chewed up inside the feed dogs. So if you're, if you're not using the scissor function, so let me just stitch some thread off. Lift you up and pull that out. What I would do would be to take my threads and hold them at the back when I start sewing. So that goes underneath. I can start right on the edge, hold the threads, and then you can pull the end of the fabric through and that's going to stop nesting. Um, if you're using the scissor function, what you could do would be to take an extra piece of fabric. I don't normally use fabric, I always have a um, tearaway stabiliser because then I can overlap the stabiliser with the fabric, just push it underneath a little bit. But if you already start your machine off sewing on a separate piece of fabric, Use it like a, a thread catcher. So the stitch is already kind of up and running when it hits the end of the fabric and then you just snip that off afterwards. I think that's going to be your easiest bet, Christine, is to just put a, put a little bit of um, thread catching fabric on the end there. Or, or again, if it's tearaway stabiliser, then you can sew over the top of it and just rip it away. And you're only using an inch square. And it's, it's, not, it's not really a big deal. You kind of get into quite a good habit of doing that. So I hope that's helped. So... Oh, we've got loads of time now, haven't we? There I am, rush, 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 and we've got loads of time, so I can, talk, I can start talking slowly again. Didn't have time to make the bag, though. Sorry about that. I shall, I shall do something on YouTube, maybe take the charm pack home and finish something off. 
just helping myself to fabric now. Right, your um, stitch guide goes in the top here. There's two sections. One has a base in it, so it sits in. The other one doesn't, so it goes all the way to the bottom for storage. For threading, you've got two... Let me take that out so you can see. Um, you've got two spools on here and there's a thread guide, so you can use cones with these as well. So if you prefer to buy your thread on, on large spools, then uh, you can use those. But this also means that you can thread up your bobbin at the same time as you're sewing because it's a completely different motor. So you will do it in the normal way, but from the second spool round here, back again, um, flick that over. And this time you've got a button to wind it on. But it, as it's a separate motor, you can carry on sewing at the same time as this is loading up. So you don't have to stop and cut your thread and all that kind of thing, which is quite useful. Um, so regular threading system, um, so nothing too out of the ordinary there, apart from you have um, the tension right on the front of the machine. And that's, I, I, I like that because that's the kind of machine I learned to sew on. And I can see exactly where it is and um, it helps to keep lint build up from inside your machine as well because the tension's on the outside. So that tends to be where your thread drags through the, the tension discs and can build up. Not a problem, but you know, nice to have that a little bit easier. You have a knee lifter included as well, which, um, which is here. <laughs> so as you're saying, this goes in the front Shan't do it with my knee because I can't lift it that high. But you move this across with your knee as you're sitting down and the foot pedal goes up and down. So if you're quilting, if you're free motion embroidering, particularly and you want both hands on top here, you can simply, say I can do it. Those hips are still working. Um, you can simply use your knee to move that around. <laughs> the other screw looking thing on the front here by the way is to balance your stitches so if you're if you've stitched and always practice first if you're stitching a buttonhole stitch for instance and you find that the sides aren't quite square then you can adjust this from one side to another if you're doing a decorative stitch and the stitch doesn't quite meet where it's supposed to that's where you can have a play with that never used it never had to but that's what that's for shall we stitch some stitches So again, your stitches will be right in front of you, um, but all you need to do is to select the number. You have different modes as well. So your utility stitches will be in mode one, and that's where it goes to when you first switch the machine on. You'll default to a straight stitch. Um, we also have your um, decorative stitches. So the, this is all mode two. And then you've got your straight stitch needle plate and your professional grade. Um, the alphabet, is over on this side and that's in mode three and you've got your uppercase and lowercase and you've got numbers and everything there as well so all you need to do is to choose your stitch so let's go for one of my favorites which is the let's do that washing line 189 in mode two so up here I've got mode one so I press the mode button and I go into mode two and then I can choose stitch 189 so mode two over here, it's telling me which, which foot I'm going to need as well. So if I go 189, same foot, I've got the stitch there. I can adjust the stitch length and the stitch width. Not all the time, but you can adjust slightly on some of the stitches. It'll beep at you if you can't. And it's telling me my feet teeth are up and these are the tensions, but I'm not going to override those. And then when you put your foot on the foot pedal, you don't need to use a foot pedal because it's got the speed control on the front. I've adjusted that way out, haven't I? That's better. Twiddling knobs, I wondered what was wrong with my stitch. Um, and then it'll stitch out. Guide your fabric underneath here, don't pull, push and pull it. So I'm just guiding it in a straight line. And you can see the fabric jumping backwards and forwards as it's stitching out the stitch. Now remember, I, you can put, um, you can remember a series of stitches, so I can be putting um, letters in between there, I can put different styles of stitch together. When it comes to the end, if I try and gauge it to stop, that's halfway through a stitch and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to carry on sewing, but I'm going to press the lock button. So when I stop sewing, it should stop. There we go, my foot's still down to the floor and that should have stopped right at the end of the design. So lift you up. See, so it stopped perfectly just at the edge of a little peg there. So we haven't had very long on the machine. 
But to take a look back on our YouTube channel again, there's been several shows now with this machine. So I think throughout the course of those shows, I've covered practically everything. So if there's anything specific that you need to know, we've been through all of the different feet and used them and showed you how to use them and the settings on the machine and the memory and things like that. So just take a look, a back, a look back through YouTube, put 720 in there, Elna 720 in the search bar and it should come up with the days that this one's been on. Um, but it's, it's a lovely machine. It's got a huge extension table with it as well. It's got far too many features to explain them to you in 10 minutes. Um, but it is it, Elna Janome, same company, my machine brand of choice. And I buy my sewing machines. I'm not giving them, I'm not, I'm not you know, brand ambassador for anybody or anything like that. I like to be, I like to choose who I like to work with. Um, and I choose these. Um, shall we have a look at what's coming up tomorrow? Because I'll see you again tomorrow morning. So we've got, oh, I thought that's a caning day. Oh, I'm glad I'm not working for that channel. Canning day by Moda, new fabrics at eight o'clock. Sewing room tours at nine, and we've got Lewis and Irene coming up at 10 o'clock. We've got more sewing coming up for the next couple of hours here on Sewing Street, so do stay with us. If you like, but we'll see you again live at eight o'clock in the morning. Have a good day, bye-bye.